Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Knights Stadium at today's NCAA Division III match between the Quakers of Wilmington College and your Southern Virginia University Knights. And you're watching this game on the Knights Broadcasting YouTube channel. And so if you're watching, be sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. That way you can be notified of every single sporting event that occurs on this broadcasting network. We thank you for joining us. My name is Dawson Wiedrich, joined alongside Scotty Winterton. And what can we say, folks? It's football season, and we're beyond excited. Yeah, Dalton, we are beyond excited. This is an opportunity for both teams who had what I think the coaching staffs and teams last year would say they want a little bit better than they got. But this opportunity, Hope Springs Eternal, first game of the season, opportunity to step out and show what they have. NCAA Division Three. you never know who you're going to lose and who you're going to get back. Both teams are bringing back some significant members of the team, but they've also lost some very significant things. On the offensive side, I think we'll have to see both teams looking to retool with the losses that they had. Indeed, and kicking off for the Quakers will be number 83, Seth Best, and you mentioned two teams that struggled last year. Both teams went two and eight, Southern Virginia going one and seven in conference, and the Quakers going two and seven in conference, respectively. And as a kickoff there, again, like you said, both teams are struggling, both wanting to figure out how they can correct the ship. And that is returned all the way out to the 25-yard line. That is returned by number nine for Southern Virginia University. Awesome opportunity for the Knights to step in on offense, get the ball first. Shumway being able to show his stuff really for the first time as the designated starter. It's his team. Uh, last year, obviously, Brad, um, Brad um, uh, Pinkston, Davis Pinkston, was really the, the showcase of the offense, both uh, with his legs and with his arms. Now Shumway gets his chance to step in. Indeed, Pinkston was the center of point of the offense for several years for Southern Virginia. And like you said, Shumway came in a little bit last year and passed for 228 yards and three touchdowns. But like you said, now the main man of the offense, what can he do? How can he get the team behind him? He's man. got some really powerful runners coming back. You're looking at guys like uh, Jacob Wood, You've got uh, Caden Nelson. You've got guys coming back that can really contribute, hopefully take some stuff off of him. A nice thrown ball. That's to number six, Jake Shank. And that's something you can come to expect from this Knights offense. We saw them warming up a little bit. They're loving those quick inside routes. Get Shumway nice and comfortable and in the flow of the offense. And Shank really came on at the end of last year as this slot receiver guy. Between him and Wester, number two, they've got the outside threat. They've got the inside threat. And then on the opposite side, you have Chase Pope. Th that three-headed monster is a returner for the Knights in terms of offensive power, and, and that's got to be comforting for Shumway. It absolutely is, and again, to get them comfortable. And so second down and three in their own territory. They're going to hand it off, and it's going to be a powerful run. He had three defenders on his back. My goodness, I believe that was Jake Wood for Southern Virginia with a powerful run. He did that several times last year, really coming into his own, put a lot of work in the offseason, lower body strength. He looks really good when you see him walking around campus. I'm excited to see what he has for the offense. So first down and 10, a new set of downs here at their own 32-yard line. That's something you like to see from an offense who's kind of figuring out what they're going to be doing. Like we mentioned before the game, we were talking, they have a new offensive coordinator, trying to figure out a new scheme going on. And if you get a quick first down, that's got to fill you with a lot of confidence. Muff snap by Shumway. He's going to have to run for it. This is a blown up play all the way. Manages to only lose two yards on the play. Avoided what would have been an utter disaster. Yeah, it's interesting to see how his legs will handle the scramble opportunities. He clearly has the arm. He's, he's tall. He sees over the, the offensive line. He's got all the tools that he needs to be effective. Can he put it together when he's in trouble, when he's scrambling? How can he do there? And he need to come up with something good here on second down and 13 in order to keep this drive alive. Shum weighing the gun with Jake Wood at his side. Two receivers on the left, one on the right. There's a snap, another quick pass in a tight window. That one intended for number eight. That is Jalen Troy, the, t the sophomore tight end from Danville, Virginia. So a long third down here. Second time they've looked for that slot opportunity, trying to get that quick hit. Smart play, second and long. You want to do something that will get you in a uh, five, six yard 
position for a first down. Didn't work out. Great defense from the Quakers. And again, that was between three defenders he was trying to fit that into. That shows he has a lot of confidence in his accuracy. We got a trips left here. One receiver on the right. Shumway back to pass. He's got some pressure. They're setting up the screen. Well defended, but a great run there at the end by Jake Wood. And that's going to get them to about a fourth and five. And no doubt they're going to punt it away. Difficult to hit a, get a big hit with the screen when the defense only rushes three. So they brought three, they drop eight, they had a lot in the middle, totally willing to give up 10 yards, that's fine. Stop them five yards, punt, be able to go on offense. So well executed defense of the screen there by Wilmington. And so punting it away for the Knights will be Jake Schenk. He's going to punt it towards the sideline. That's going to go out of bounds. Not necessarily what they wanted, as it's going to make the Quakers at about the 33-yard line. Excuse me, the 35-yard line. So Shank trying the rugby-style kick. Definitely not what uh, they were hoping for. A good starting position for the Quakers. Of course, when you're trying to make sure that a team cannot get a good return, I mean, there's some good skill players here on this Quakers team. If you want to get that no return possibility, you aim for the sidelines. But like you said, just too short of a punt for their liking. So now I got Derek Larimer in the shotgun. It's going to be a solid run to start off, about a three-yard gain there. It'll be really interesting to see how the Quakers matches up with this retooled line and linebacking core of the Knights. Losing Jason Ciosi, who's got a preferred walk-on spot at the University of Utah, also losing Justin Mitchell, big hitter from the safety spot. A lot of uh, physical play the Knights have to, to recover from losing. Another were, handoff here. Last year. That is to Tienshu. He's going to gain another two yards. And you mentioned those defensive players that Southern Virginia lost. That has really been the core of the Southern Virginia team this past five years under coach Edwin Mulitalo is the defensive side of the ball. Every team in their conference knows Southern Virginia can play ball on that side. It's always been a, a question of if they can respond offensively. And so, again, losing those weapons, how do you keep that momentum as a defensive team going? Nate Lalo, defensive coordinator, worked really hard on recruiting some defensive backs to match the big hosses they had up front. As a solid pass there for a first down, that is to wide receiver number 10 for the Quakers. That is Joey, excuse me, Cortland Duncan, the junior from Chillicothe, Ohio. Duncan who went down low to get that. That is a really tough get when that ball's behind you and you got to go down low to get it. As Tianchu again, he's got some space. He's going to get it. And a couple of flags on the, on the field here. Before he was knocked out with, at about a gain of seven yards. So they're working Tianchu early and often in this. And again, him in a good rhythm and trying to wear down that defensive front for Southern Virginia. That early flag that came out right away, usually some kind of hooking or holding on the, on the outside when that ball bounces out. It will indeed be holding. Against Wilmington. That'll make it a first down once again. So both teams having a good first set of chains, then setting themselves back on the first play of the next set of chains. So first down and 14 for the Fighting Quakers. Mr. Kaiser not turning off his microphone when he blew the whistle. Not <laughs> Wants to make sure that crack. everyone knows everyone that he blew knows that whistle. what's going on. And we want to give a shout out to all the refs of today's game. Of course, Scott Kaiser being the head ref of today. A nice screen pass. And that is caught. And a nice solid hit there from number 16. My goodness, laying the wood. That is Colby Hyder. You and a Basin native coming out of Roosevelt, Utah. Got uh, his brother on the team as well. Hyder has put so much work into the weight room. They got a weight room in their house. 
and those brothers just get after it all off season. Oh, that'll make it tough. That'll make it tough for sure. So second down and five, or a long four for the Quakers. Larimer back to pass, looking to his left. He's got a deep route. Great extension and a great grab. That is number eight, Lathan Jones. Solid toss for Larimer. Now shouting out the referees before, along with Scott Kaiser, we have David Spears, Thomas Hughes, Rodney Bryant, Joshua Dula, Michael Wagstaff Sr., and Mark Collins making up a referee staff today. Sounds like an all-star staff to me. Lemmer is going to hand it off. Nice breakdown on the defensive end. Only a gain of two yards. Siausi was such a big presence in the middle of the field. He allowed... And so it'll be a second down and eight here for the Quakers. Larimer's got two receivers on each side of the field. It's back to pass, trying to set the screen, but he's got a receiver open over the top. And it'll be incomplete, well covered from Southern Virginia. That is number seven for the Knights, getting in there at the last second. That is Jacob Taloa, the senior from Tracy, California. And so that'll make it third down and seven, deep in night territory. And also in that play for Southern Virginia was Jamar Robinson, the sophomore from Mantefi, California. Man in motion, Larimer's gonna look to his right, setting up a screen. Well covered from Southern Virginia, but well fought. They're gonna put him down about two yards shy of the marker. Yards after catch there were huge. Just barely short of the first down, but it looked like, as you said, he was gonna be well short. Here we go, Big first big play of the game. Wanting to establish dominance early on, able to run the ball. And it looks like they will get it and a little bit more as he's driving his legs. Even helmets flying off after that play. Well, that's the big question that we were looking for. You know, how is the defensive line of the Knights going to be able to respond with some big key losses? Clearly right there, they got pushed around a little bit. It's now first down and 10. Inside the red zone of Southern Virginia. I gotta say, these are some sharp uniforms looking here at the, the first game of the season. I love them both. Both teams representing their universities very well. Larimer looking to the right. Nearly picked off there. That was number 37 for Southern Virginia. It's Robbie Balboa, such a great player for the Knights, this big freshman pickup. With a name Utah. like that, can you not be an athlete? No, yeah, <laughs> you, better, you better be tough, you better be strong. I think you're gonna be tested. You got the last name Balboa, although I'm not sure how many kids know these days who Balboa <laughs> is, I don't know. Well, they better or something's terribly wrong. Their parents failed them if you don't know <laughs> who Balboa is. Second down and 10 for the Quakers. Lamer sends a man in motion, looking to his right. And it's gonna be to the end zone, touchdown. That is caught by receiver number one. Ace Taylor, the senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. So Wilmington will strike first and put six on the board. And Ace definitely looking like a senior right there. You go back and watch that replay. Slot receiver just inside. Attacks the outside foot of the defensive back and then cuts in hard. Perfect pass. It's a money play. It was a beautiful one-on-one -on -one chance. There was literally no one else in the area. It's just you trusting your guy up against the defender. Absolutely beautiful play there from Wilmington. Yeah, they spread it out. They go four wide receivers. Defender doesn't move with him. But he had no, I mean, he didn't have any inside leverage either, so there was no way there to help him. Flag, flag down, right down the field, so the play will not count. We will see what the penalty is. Probably a false start. Instead, it's a delay of game. So that'll set them back five yards and try to get the two-point conversion once again. I appreciate the syntax of Mr. Kaiser right there. He delayed the game. He <laughs> delayed the game. That is, you don't do that on Scott's field. Not on Mr. Kaiser's field. You do not delay the game. 
making sure they run a tight ship here as far as refing is concerned. So instead of the two-point conversion, they will elect to kick the extra point. This will be kicked by Seth Best. Kick is up. And it is good. That'll make it 7 to nothing in favor of Wilmington College. Well, the Knights had a couple opportunities to get off the field. You mentioned that second series of the chains. It was first and 15. They had the holding call. So we're not able on two third downs to get off the field. Great job from the Quakers. Just keep the chains moving, keep the chains moving. Eventually you get down there and you can punch it in. I think it was a lot of it was due in part to the strong leadership of Derek Larimer last year being the leading passer for the Quakers, now come back into this year, being able to really lead this team on a great opening drive of the season. So Best will be kicking it off for the Quakers once again. You mentioned that the Quakers leaning heavily on the run game. Great job from... DeMarco Owens, the freshman from Richmond, they, they did a great job just working, working, working the ball. Here comes the kickoff. Kick is away. And this is number nine. That is Jarek Washington breaking free for a good solid return. Drake Washington putting the Knights in good field position. The sophomore from Orange, Virginia, just up the road. The Knights doing a good job of looking at the state. When you look across the roster, it's really impressive. You'll see this move here on the replay where he plants that foot, cuts outside. It's a beautiful move. And then he hops over the defender with a little, little hurdle that gets him another extra 10 yards. Clearly an athletic player. of the receiving and defensive back court. You always know every single talented player on a football roster, whether it be running back or receiver, is just looking to hurdle somebody at some point. He took that opportunity there. Shumway in the backfield. Quick pass to the outside. That's going to gain him about three yards. That was complete to Jake Schenk. Quinn Davis quick to the ball there. Davis, one of the smaller players on the field, 5'8", junior but very quick to the ball. And once again, utilizing that quick passing attack, trying to get things comfortable, get what you can at a time, just taking what the defense gives you. I'm really interested to see this matchup here on this near side with Davis and Wester. Trying to get the hard count here. They're going to hand it off to Woods, and he's got a solid run here, getting it to about third and two. You talk about yards after contact. He made contact with a couple defenders there. Yeah, they raise him well out there in Gilbert, Arizona. Tough kid leading the Knights last year on the ground. He's really an important part to the Shumway offense, allowing his opportunities to, to do play action, maybe some RPO. The Knights lost a really important part of their offense in losing Coach Dupay, yes. who's chosen to go out west and pursue some other things. He's such, it was such a big part for such a long time. Wood gets a stiff arm, and he's going to get across the first down. Another tough run from Jake Wood. He looked like he was dead to rights in the backfield, outran it, stiff armed the defender, and pushed through. Beautiful run from Jake Wood. That's got to make new offensive coordinator Patrick Hoffman really happy. You know, I players and coaches about Hoffman, the thing that they've emphasized is his attention to focusing on small things. Right step here, left step here. Really focusing in on how they can tweak something with a really small adjustment and the big advantage that, that can make. That's an awesome thing for Hoffman to bring to this offense. Three receivers to the right for Southern Virginia. Shumway drops back to pass. Quick read here. And that's complete to the right side to Jake Shank once again. Jake Shank getting targeted early and often. And yeah, just going to that slot receiver over and over again. 
We'll have to see if they take an opportunity to hit a double move if the Quakers start cheating up and really focusing in on the short game. That's the whole intention is to lull them to sleep and then eventually at some point throw it over the top, try a strike downfield. Yeah, I would love to see Woodson Francois get down the field. Take a look at Chase Pope. In the gun, second down and four. Shumway's gonna take it himself and fall forward for a solid four yard gain, close to the first down. Yeah, full option there, had the uh, opportunity to, to hand it off to Wood. Keeps it himself right up the middle. Great job from the interior line of the Knights of just he might be right behind him. And again, we mentioned before the game started that Shumway can run. He's not as notorious for it as his predecessor, Davis Pinkston, was, but he's still capable of doing so. He's got some good feet on him. He's got a good head on his shoulders. So he can pick up the yards when he needs to. Well, Davis Pinkston was such a load. I mean, he, you know, 5'11", 6 foot and so strong. Shumway a little taller. And up and upended after only about a one yard gain for the first down, but it'll be enough. That was number. That was Alex Langtree, number 30, the sophomore from Magna, Utah. Yeah, Langtree had a, a number of those runs last year. Really that kind of fullback, short yardage specialist. He'll put his nose down and just go forward when he knows he needs one yard. He's not the guy that's gonna shake everybody, but he knows how to get a yard. So will be first and and 10 yards to go at the Quakers 39 yard line. A solid drive here developing for Southern Virginia. Got a lot of receivers now here in the slot. Adrian Howard, sophomore from Fredericksburg, Virginia. A lot of new guys in the getting playing time from last year. Nearly complete to number six, Jake Shank, but it bounced off his chest. He was anticipating the hit a little bit there. And it came anyway. Yes. <laughs> he was right to anticipate it. Got his hands on the ball, almost tipped at the line of scrimmage. Inside linebacker was sitting on that play, waiting for it. I mean, you do a play enough times, the defense is going to get used to it. They're going to make adjustments. Might as well adjust to it early on. Yeah, this three deep zone that they're running, rushing three, in nickel most of the time. Now they bring seven up to the line of scrimmage. Drop out of it. They're handing off to Wood. He's got a solid run here, churning his legs. He's going to make it about a third and five at the Quakers' 35-yard line. The, the safety dropping in that three-deep zone. There's opportunities to run for the Knights. There's only five, sometimes six players in the box. There's definitely opportunities for the Knights to run. So a manageable third down. Just under three minutes and 40 seconds left to play in this first quarter. Score is 7-0 to zero in favor of Wilmington. Jacob Wood in the backfield with Shumway. Sending Chase Wester in motion. Shumway's going to look, and now he's going to run with it. He's got some space. And he's going to wisely fall to the ground, but there's a flag on the field and a Quaker on the field as well. That would be number eight. That is Red Holston. Red Holston, the senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. We've yet to hear what the penalty the is. Knights. Scott Kaiser looking to the bench on the Quaker side and see if they want to accept or not. And it's a tough decision. Do you go third and, well, it depends. Five, you know, is it a five-yard penalty or is it a 10-yard uh, penalty? Yeah. I mean, I think you have to. I think it was four. It would be like fourth and a yard or less than. Or do you go third and 15? And Southern Virginia has been able to get those one yard, two yard plays this entire drive. So I agree with you, they did make the right choice in accepting that penalty. Third down and 16. It's not Holston getting up under his own power, walking off the field. Of course, Holston being a senior on that defense, that's gonna be a tough loss for them in the backfield and see who all can step up. And you could expect if Southern Virginia doesn't try something like a screen pass or like try to just get a couple yards on the on the ground, maybe try to attack that right away. 
It's the third down and 15. Looks like they're gonna rush three again. They haven't blitzed much. They're bringing three or four every time and only bring three this time. And they're gonna toss over the top. Shank with the grab, what a catch for a first down, like we mentioned, attacking it down the field right away after an injury. Amazing play call and an even better catch. And, and under the double team. That was not necessarily the open man, but as you look at this replays, as he goes down, he, he was blanketed, but he goes up higher than the defenders. Great spot for Shumway to put the ball, only his receiver could get it. Great play. And making up for that drop early in the drive. They're going to hand off to Jake Wood. He's got some space on the left side. And he's going to get close to a first down. I believe he got it. Best run of the evening for the Knights. Wood looks inside, plants the right foot, and they had nice leverage on the outside. No contain. Ball gets upfield 10 yards. First down. Quakers really have done a good job of containing Wood on the inside and allowing the, the big guys up front to, to stop him. This time he gets to the outside. Looks like they're going to call it just it. short of a first down here. Second down in inches is what it looks like. Two receivers on the right side. Trying to get the hard count, handing off to Wood yet again, because why not? He's been getting your yardage. He gets inside the 10, down to the three yard line. Such great patience, Dalton, as he hit the line of scrimmage, held up for just a minute, found a crease, and then went hard forward, covering the ball, making sure he wasn't going to fumble it. And that's one thing a lot of people fail to, to think about when they're talking about the ideal running back. You talk about speed, you talk about strength, you talk about low center of gravity. Another thing you mentioned, they have to have the patience. Let the play develop, let the holes open up, and see where you can go. So first down and goal at the Quakers' four-yard line. Knights have a chance to respond to the Quakers' earlier touchdown. You also have Malik Jones, the uh, fullback, who's done a great job making some holes and protecting the quarterback. Jake Wood yet again down to the one. At this point, might as well just run Jake the next time. He's done a good enough job, might as well give him the touchdown. I agree, you keep going at it. Although you, you've seen this, we're gonna see this in a minute. There, right now, the offense is doing a little conditioning on the defense, handing that off, and that naked bootleg will come out at some point for Shumway. Second down and goal, they're actually gonna down at the two yard line. Got Johansson on the right side. Shumway's gonna throw the fade to the back of the end zone and that's gonna be caught for a touchdown, Southern Virginia. Chase Pope, hand fighting, hand fighting with the defensive back, able to slip the hands of the defensive back as the ball was going past the ear of the man in green. Watch how the, the defender never really gets his head around. I, he was right there to knock it down the discipline that it takes to, to hand fight and then get your head around physical skill set. And typically on those passes, you want to kind of get high up for your receiver to jump for, but instead, Shumway threw it more to the inside of the end zone. So Chase Pope had to really, like you mentioned, kind of fight his way towards it. Yeah, did a little, a little defensive end move and shuck the defender to get inside leverage and catch that ball the Knights. They're going to fake the two-point attempt, but instead go for the PAT. <laughs> The Knights have been doing that routine. That for was the their Tony season. Hawk uh, little uh, fakie to uh, tail <laughs> grind right there. The snap is up. And it's good. We have a tie ball game, folks. 7-7 seven to seven with 38 seconds left in this first quarter. Like we mentioned, we talked about this before the game. Two teams that were very much on the same boat last year. And we're having a neck-and-neck -neck game here so far. This is looking to be a good contest. Yeah, what a great response. First for the Quakers to come down. Their first possession to grind it, push it down, make a big play when they had to, utilize uh, the, the, the opportunity to overcome a penalty or two. Knights had to do the same thing in response. That shows that both of these teams feel really good about themselves and where they're at. And you love to see that. We're here for a good football game, and I think we're gonna get it, Dalton. And one thing I always love to see as well is with Southern Virginia taking that long drive, those small chunks, small chunks, small chunks, drives like that give your defense a much needed break. And that's something that Southern Virginia has really focused on the past couple years, having those long drives, making sure you really give your defense a breather because you need your defense. 
I don't care who you are, you need your defense to be nice and healthy and rested, and they gave them just that on that drive. So for Southern Virginia, it'll be number 40, Joe Kim kicking off. We love hearing the stands come alive here at Knight Stadium. This is a short kick, and it's muffed and handed off. It'll be brought out to the 25 and body slammed to the ground. Great coverage from the kickoff team. A little bit of extracurricular on the field. I think they're discussing where they want to meet after for a hamburger or something. Just a little friendly banter back and forth. Maybe they're all going to meet at the Palms for a nice haystack hamburger. <laughs> at least that's where we'll be, Dalton, right? Oh, absolutely. I take it back. We're going to JJ's. We got to go local. Let's go. <laughs> JJ's meet Shaq three minutes down the road. Try the Shaq attack. It'll do you well. Got to get those good old chili cheese fries from JJ's meet Shaq there. So now we got Derek Larimer leading the offense of the Quakers here. Trying to respond to Southern Virginia's long drive. First and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Vacation on the outside, finding uh, number one, Ace Taylor, who was the senior catching the, the touchdown pass earlier. Really great identification on, on where the Knights were setting up in a zone defense, wide open, receiver on the slot to block. That's a great play. And a gain of nine, make it second down and one. That's a great first play of a drive where you want to respond. Larimer in the gun. He's going to fake the handoff, look to his right. He's got a man open. Well defended. That is number seven for Southern Virginia. That is Jacob Taloa. Jacob Taloa for Southern Virginia making that play. Taloa, been around this program for a long time. Does a great job in that defensive back position. And Larimer identified that opening in that space, but again, Taloa closed that gap fast. And third down and one, stuffed at the line of scrimmage. So that is really different than what we saw on the first drive, where the Knights' offense, defensive line was getting pushed around a little bit. This is a tough place to go for it. And it looked well, like that was to think about it. It was Kamani Vivani or Vivai, Kamani Vivai, that was responsible for that tackle. Oh, they made the play. Dalton, this is a, let's see what they're going to do. They look like they were going to go for it. I mean, again, for the opening part of this game, they've been able to run the ball decently except for that last play. So they have the confidence in their ability to run that. But instead, it looks like they're not going to. They're going to punt it away. We have two men returning for Southern Virginia. That's a short punt to the left side. That is not what they wanted. Yeah. Both teams struggling a little bit at the at the punter position. And so the Knights will set up shop in Quaker territory after the unfortunate punt, we'll call it. Yeah, by far for either team of the afternoon. Shumway in the pistol. 
They're going to hand it off to Jake Wood. And he's got another strong run here. He's got some space. He's going to get the first down and plow a defender before he is shoved out of bounds and a flag is thrown. May have been a late hit there. Yeah, they're definitely going to get that call. He was jumping out of bounds, defenseless player, either one. Looks like that was number 13, Jared Lee, responsible for that penalty from Eaton, Ohio. That opportunity to get again to the edge with the stiff arm, really, take, this is the second time we've seen him take advantage with a solid stiff arm to get himself some extra yardage. And it may have been some extra words that were said at the end of the play as well that got him flagged there on that hit on Jake Wood. And so it'll be first down and 10 inside the 20. The Quakers showing blitz on the outside. And off to Jake Wood. And it's going to be a short run here. Gain of about four. When the Knights have Malik Jones, big number 46 in there, the freshman from Illinois, watch, watch him because so far they've run behind him almost every time that he's in there as an H-back position slash fullback. I'm sure they have a lot of opportunity to use him in different ways. Doing a great job opening up holes. You see he's the one coming off the field right now doing a great job opening up holes for Wood. And with that, some confusion for Southern Virginia's offense. They're going to have to get the playoff very quickly. The play clock is running down now at five seconds. And I think they're going to call a timeout here. Big Ed Mulitalo looks over to the head judge and says, hey, give me a timeout. And that's just, again, getting the rust off. It's beginning of the season. You're trying to get back into things, and one little thing goes wrong, and now you're all confused. But at least they didn't take the penalty. Yeah, you'll easily get first half. You give up uh, all your timeouts. You're already in the second quarter, especially where they're at, second and five, second and six. Call it second and seven, I guess. You really got to have a solid play right here. And right here, the Knights have everything in the playbook open to them. They could go back to that pistol. They've done a great job getting to the edge. They've had two or three runs up the middle. And they've also had those big wide receivers on the outside to throw those fade routes to, like, again, the touchdown they had. They also have Jake Wood they can rely on. So, like you said, their playbook is wide open right now. Yeah, I think we got to keep an eye on this Wester Davis matchup on the far side. At some point, Shumway's going to go find Wester. Two receivers on each side for Southern Virginia. They're going to send a man in motion. The snap. Shumway's going to look. Oh, it's the end zone. And that Just. was the Wester Davis matchup. It looked like Wester had it. Just barely out of the reach of his hands. A beautifully thrown ball, just a tad too much mustard on that one. Again, I, I like the play call. I like the fact that they attacked. They made sure that the show, like, hey, we're not afraid to go for the ends, and we're not afraid to target your cornerbacks right now. Yeah, and he did a little inside move, got to the outside. It just it was thrown a little bit over his outside shoulder, and he was looking over his inside shoulder tough to make that adjustment to go with your head from inside and track it as it goes to the outside. It's almost like you really have to turn around and do a 360 or 180 with, the, with your body. This will be a false start on Southern Virginia. And I was just about to say, with it being in the red zone, you kind of have more options. I mean, on third down or second down, you can go for that long pass. You still technically have two downs to go if you want to go for it on fourth down. You can only gain about five yards and then maybe a two-yard play in order to get the first down. But now you're backed up third and 12 in the red zone. So now in this situation, you need to get within three or four yards in order to make going for it on fourth down justified. You also have Matthew Johansson, and he was came in, he got injured at the beginning of last season. He was slated to be the top receiver, really, for the Knights on the outside before he got injured. Shumway back to pass. He's got some pressure. He's going to throw it up to no one. There was some miscommunication there and a flag on the field. 
Wester looked right at the referee, the side judge, and said, I could not turn and go after that ball with the two hands that were pushed against me. So possibly a defensive holding on that one. We will see the official call here on the field. We got a lot of fans here arguing of who, who was the ball being thrown to? Was it even able to be got? Like, was it accurate enough to actually have an attempt on it? So we'll be defensive pass interference. The, the Wilmington fans underneath us are respectfully disagreeing. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a tough play. I mean, it was a sort of inaccurate throw from Colton Shumway. It was between two players. You didn't really know exactly who was going to. But there was extracurricular activity that prevented receivers from going for it. So I think ultimately they came up with the right call. So now it'll be first down and goal at the Quaker five-yard line. And just like that, they were backed up third and 12. Their playbook is open all over again. Yeah, when you're, when you're first in, and goal from the five, they took Malik Jones. Oh, Malik is in there. Watch that run over the, the left side. Don't oh, put Lee Malik out to the flat. Shumway is going to run there. it. And wide open, but dropped. Jalen Troy, who really came on last year in some really cool opportunities looking for that ball, thrown a little behind him. Tough adjustment to make. Indeed it is. A lot of people will, you know, Monday morning quarterback and look at it saying, oh, it hits your hands, you should catch it. But there's a lot of other stuff going into it. You're twisting your body. You're... But it was a good improvisation play from Shumway, trying to find the open man, avoiding the pressure. Yeah, if you're Pat Hoffman, you're Coach Hoffman, you love to see Shumway improvising. It's the second time he's done that. He had that bobble play. He came out of that pretty good. Doing a, a great job of just managing through difficult situations. The throw to the right side. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Johansson, but thrown a little to the outside and very well defended. Yeah, again, Johansson looked like he wanted to take it inside and Shumway threw it outside. Johansson zigged and Shumway zagged. I am kind of surprised to see Southern Virginia not take any opportunities to run the ball in this situation, considering how well it worked from the last possession. Yeah, now you're in a position where that run, probably not really an option. Maybe an RPO and, and see what they can get out of it, but. Because Wilmington's they, loading the box right now. Right, and without Wood in there, I, I, I'm, this is, this is going to be a pass play. Shumway drops back. RPO action here, he rolling out to his left, he's gonna throw, and caught! What a grab, that is number 46 for Southern Virginia. Yeah, Malik Jones, we, we saw that happening several times where he had leaked out, looked like he was blocking, looked like he was blocking, sits down on the block and then leaks out quick, Shumway finds him. And he had a defender draped over his back and still able to come down with the grab, fantastic hands. So we look at the play here. Again, Shumway fakes the handoff, rolls out to his left. Throwing as a right-hander, rolling out to your left. I mean, doing that somewhat accurately in and of itself is impressive. Yeah, it was a fantastic play to turn his hips, put that ball where Malik Jones could catch it. And, and Jones, to his credit, I mean, those are not easy catches to make. They are not. You've got somebody all over you, but he's a wide body, focused on the ball, and he turned his hips all the way around to catch the ball behind him. And here's the thing, Shumway didn't throw that ball behind him. He gave him that pass so that Jones wouldn't have it deflected by the defensive back. I mean, that was a really, really smart play for Shumway to put that ball where it couldn't be deflected and only Jones could get to it. We had a legal formation. Those were high-level plays, dude. Those were high-level plays. Yeah. So on the PAT attempt, it was a legal formation on Southern Virginia, so they're going to have to attempt that again. So attempting the kick yet again will be number 40, Joe Kim. So this is sort of the, the long kicker for the Knights. The kick is up, and it's no good. So the Knights will have a six-point lead with 13 and a half minutes left in this first half.
But a great response from Southern Virginia yet again. And uh, again, they had a great stop. The short punt definitely helped with field position. And the fact they were able to drive down the field after a couple of missed opportunities, a dropped pass here and there, they're able to put into the end zone. Fantastic job for the Knights. Yeah, and the Knights are really using the ground game to set up their pass game. They, they scored that touchdown with that little throw that uh, Jones has leaked out on, but it had been maybe five, six plays in a row where Jones was diving inside, looking to block, looking to block, looking to block, and then, then slips out. Seems like that's what we're going to get right now from the Knights until they you know, kind of figure a few other things out. We did have that great play to, um, uh, on the side to Shank, but outside of, kind of that big pass play, not a lot. Maybe, maybe you know, they, they did that opportunity to, to Wester, but Shumway's been very patient. Hoffman being very patient in the play calling as well. And I tell you what, my five years of covering Southern Virginia football, this is one of the most efficient displays of offense that I've seen from a Southern Virginia team in a, in a while. It's been, again, a well-oiled machine, like you said, using their run to establish the pass, and then they're able to run it again with Jake Wood, doing a great job of utilizing all their weapons they have. And that is fielded by number four. That is uh, Jamon Clark. So that'll set them up at their own 32-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 with just over 13 minutes left in this first half. And I believe we've been saying the name of the quarterback incorrectly so far on the stream. It looks like it's been... I think it's been Adam Dixon. It's hard, that Those numbers are really hard to tell. I, I think it's Dixon and not Larimer that's in right now. They're going to have the screen on the outside, and it's going to be good for about four yards. We'll try to get some clarification on that. We apologize to the families if we've been saying that wrong. We want to give props due where they are deserved. That'll be second down and eight for the Quakers. You know, again, we talked about this being the first game of the season for both teams. Both offenses aren't necessarily playing like it is. They, they're playing like they've been through the motions. They've been doing everything well. They're executing their offense as well as they could. No turnovers so far. Another good wide receiver screen right here for the Quakers. Yeah, solid blocking up front from, from Ace Taylor. Not only can he catch, but he is physical at the point of attack. He's fan. That's a little Heinz Ward action blocking. That's a man who really loves football. You can always tell receivers that love football when they just love getting after somebody. It's a lot of fun to see those guys play. And speaking of which, Itika Wynn Jr., the wide receiver on the outside, the blocking that he did, you mentioned players loving football. That's a good example right there. Wynn Jr., the deep ball for him, and it's caught. And he breaks free of the 20, the 10, the 5. He's brought down in the end zone. Touchdown, Quakers. Looks like he may have lost the ball for a second, but I believe he crossed the line to gain before losing the football. A quick response from Wilmington College. That, uh, that illegal procedure on the Knights that they lost that field position and end up missing the field goal or the point after, that's really big right now. That, that looms very large if the Quakers can capitalize right here, go up 14-13. And the attempt is up right down the middle. So it'll be 14-13 in favor of Wilmington College. Again, both these offenses had executed sort of a slow and steady wins the race mentality, but that time, I mean, Atika Win Jr., he said, give it to me, I'm gonna take it to the house, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, he only had maybe half a yard on the defender, but showed really great strength after the catch. Ball was put, dimed it, he dropped it right in the basket, and then the strength to fight through the tackle and finish in the end zone, the speed to beat the safety. It's a fantastic play. And you know because of that play, there's going to be some specific drills run for the defensive backs come Monday. As, as someone who's played football for, or who played football for a long time, I know exactly what's happening when plays like that in a game happen. You know the coach is thinking, okay, 
We're going to do this type of drill. The players are going to hate it, but it's going to make them learn. It's going to make them better. Well, and that's the first game, right? I mean, exactly. the first game is so much of a testing ground. The, the opportunities for these teams, you, you get a practice for about a week and a half, sometimes two weeks, but you're very limited by NCAA rules. There's a uh, climatization periods before you can actually put the pads on. They get after it a little bit, but it's not until you get to go up against somebody on the other team that you really figure out what kind of team you got. And kicking for Wilmington College is number 85, Connor Bucksath. The kick is up. This is a shorter kick as well. No one knew who was going to field it. It's muffed. Knights have to get on it. We got a good return here. And he's breaking through several tacklers to get across the 30-yard line. So Washington, this happens all the time, right? The ball falls in the ground, and it it's just throws the rhythm off of everything. But your point, like breaking that tackle and pushing through, you love it when a, a man makes a mistake, which happens, right? You get a bad grade, you forget your anniversary, right? whatever, right? <laughs> you make a mistake, you drop a ball. The question is, what do you do with the moment? Exactly. And it's really cool to see Washington take that moment and make something positive out of it. And so that sets them up in decent field position at their own 30 and a half yard line with 12 and a half minutes left to play in this first half. Got Jake Wood in the backfield. And they're going to hand it off to Wood. Predictably so, he's only going to gain about a one yard gain. That was fantastic filling the hole as uh, Jared Lee, the middle linebacker, stepped up, the sophomore out of Ohio, Eaton, Ohio. Hit that hole really hard. Wood tried to sidestep him, not able to get anything out of it. So we've got second down and long eight to go. Got Wood in the backfield. Shumway making some adjustments. They're going to hand off again. I tell you what, Wilmington making a lot of adjustments to plug those holes very early and making sure they can shut down that run game. Yeah, they put Jones in motion to the right side, then they essentially treat him like a pulling tackle and, and bring him back across to the left-hand side. But the inside linebacker core of this Wilmington Quaker team is just too strong right now. They're getting off the blocks. The front line is allowing those linebackers to run free on this drive. Number eight, Jalen Troy coming in for Southern Virginia at the tight end position. They have a long third down and seven. Wilmington looking to make a stop here. Shumway back to pass. He's got man to the outside. That's Jake Shake. a nice completion all the way to the midfield. This is the third time with second or third and long when the Knights go back to pass. Wilmington's only rushing three. And Shumway's been able to find the open receiver in the eight-man zone. And that's one thing we mentioned before the game that Wilmington's had struggles with. Defensive line-wise, they've been pretty solid. Last year, they were able to get pressure on the quarterback, able to stop the run. It was the defensive backfield where they struggled a lot and were unable to stop the big plays down the field. And that's why they were only able to give up about 45 points a game last season because of those big plays. Jake Wood on the inside. Crossing midfield, making it about first or second down and four to go. It looked like he wanted to turn that upfield and said, no, nah, I'll just take this outside. Really good blocking from the Knights, both from the, the tight end and receiver position as well as inside, allowing him to get bumped to the sideline. He wanted to turn that upfield. There's no opportunity to do it. So second down and five inside Quaker territory. Got three receivers on the right side. Handing off to Jake Wood. Again, Wilmington College's defenders crashing down hard on the run. Shumway looked a little indecisive right there, trying to figure out was he going to keep that ball or give it up to, to his running back. So it'll be third down and three for the Knights. And again, in a situation like this, third down and short yardage. 
this is a difficult situation for a defense. Again, because we mentioned before, in situations like this, you can have a quick pass play, you can have a good run up the middle. They've been a lot better at stopping the run in this possession, though. They're feeling a lot more confident about that situation. Yeah. Pistol with Langtree in the backfield, timeout for the Knights. Timeout. Want to think these over because this is oh, a, an timeout. important possession right now. Again, you're down by one, you miss the PAT, that kind of puts you back a little bit, like you mentioned before. So now this possession, you have to respond or at least get it deeper into Wilmington territory. Yeah, you. you I think you're actually right, Dawson, that if you can get this first down, great, but you're also in a position where punting-wise, field position-wise, you have a chance to pin them deep. That being said, Coach Muitalo has not been shy when he crosses the 50 of going for it on fourth down. He is not afraid to strike out and make sure to say, like, hey, we're here to win this ball game. But during this time, I want to remind you that if you are new to viewing games on Knights Broadcasting here on YouTube, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscription, and be sure to click that notification bell, the little bell button by the subscribe button. Yeah, that makes sure that you are notified of every single sporting event that we host here on this channel. Don't miss out on any of the Southern Virginia University action. You don't want to miss it. We've got men's and women's soccer going. We've got field hockey. We've got uh, football going, obviously. It's a beautiful time of year. And women, you're right, and women's volleyball. Later in the semester, men's and women's basketball starting up, wrestling. Knights have 26 teams in their athletic program. And just added a 27th, women's wrestling. Indeed, a lot of things happening at Southern Virginia. So third down and three for the Knights. They're handing off a lot of lead blockers. All right, that counter play looked like teeth to it than, than they got. That was Alex Langtree getting that carry, and it's going to make it fourth down and short. And like you said, Coach Militalo historically, in this situation, he just says, you know what? We're going for it. We're going to show you. We're going to go for it on you. We don't care. We're not afraid of you. This is really big for the Quakers. They get a stop right here, scoring on their last drive. This is a great opportunity for both teams. And scoring as quickly as they did. Yeah, right away, right? Langtree in the backfield once again for the Knights. Knights loading the offensive line. Troy and Jones, those are two big boys on the right side. He looks like he's gonna be stuffed short of the line to gain. And that's a momentum play if I've seen one from Wilmington College. Yeah, that stuff up the middle, there may have been space on the outside. You had Jones and Troy out there. Those are guys that can move piles, but cut it up underneath and the linebacking core plug the hole, defensive line able to come down the line of scrimmage, get their hands on the running back, pull them to the ground. And now this is good testing ground for the Southern Virginia offense. The other team just made a great stop. Now you need to make a stop of your own and respond in your own way. Yeah, the defense here really needs to get the back of their offense. This is when you have your, your family that uh, needs your help. Deep throw, a little high, but caught. That is number seven, Gavin Fushi. Yeah, great job coming in the middle, finding the soft spot in the zone, sitting down. The pass was right on the money. Adam Dixon very accurate on that throw. Back to pass once again, wide open, no one covering him whatsoever. Another quick touchdown for the Fighting Quakers. Yeah, that was a blown coverage on the left side. Safety was looking inside. Defensive back stepped up. Nobody, nobody that covered was, the deep out. That was the freshman number 11, Josh uh, Thompson. That wasn't quite there. He let him go behind him. And yeah, allowed yeah, there for was one touchdown. guy was playing zone, one guy was playing man for the this Knights defense. Lack of communication there. And that, as any coach will tell you, that can lead to disaster when something's not communicated properly. So here's the PAT attempt. The kick is up, and it is good. That makes the score 21 to 13 in favor of Wilmington College. Now, your defense is starting to look a little, showing a little cracks here. Now your offense has got to step up and say, hey, they're starting to get their rhythm. We got to get our rhythm back. And the Knights have been able to move the ball 
they just got to keep moving the chains, right? Like you, you get a, a nine yard run, you got to complete the, the play, get the first down on the next go. I think a big thing for Southern Virginia is when it comes to the running game, they started off very well with that, but after a while, they started to become predictable. They started to become very predictable when they were going to do that and made it a lot easier to stop. They got to get back to the point where they don't know what they're going to do. They got to whip out the different short passes again. You know, the slots uh, pass that they had on the inside like to, to Shank. That got them in the rhythm in the first place. Yeah, we haven't seen a pass since uh, Shank got uh, blown up a little bit back in the first quarter. Kicking off here for the Quakers is number 85, Connor Buxath. Just under eight minutes left to go in this first half, and it's been an exciting one so far. Plenty of points put on the board, a lot of great defensive play as well. This game has had everything you could ever want in a football game so far. And, and overall, pretty clean, right? Not a lot of penalties. No this turnovers. This is a deep kick here. This is Jake Wood. He's got the return. He's got open space. But cracked down very quickly. Brought out to their own 27-yard line. And that's where the Knights will set up shop. Yeah, now, they're using Wood a lot. He's tapping his head saying, give me a rest. He's, he's gotten a, a lot of work in this first half. And in this possession, again, you have just under eight minutes left to play. It's no time to panic. You are down by eight. So you have to make sure you get your feet underneath yourself, but don't panic. Just run your offense the way that it's designed. Take what is given. Take the small chunks. Make sure you get comfortable with the running game again and chew as much clock as you can while making sure that you put some points on the board. Little five-yard penalty for offsides on Wilmington. That'll make it even easier for Southern Virginia starting off this possession at their own 34-yard line. Shumway back to pass. He's got some pressure. He's going to have to throw that one away. Smart decision from the QB. Yeah, receiver he was looking for, Shank downfield. It got kind of blown up on the sideline. He was looking around. Where's the flag? Just looked like some incidental contact, but he was hoping there'd be something. He was the only receiver that Shank could find. Smart play to throw it out of bounds. And you're starting to see the Quakers bring more pressure on Shumway here. Again, like I mentioned earlier on, they were only rushing three for a while. Now they're bringing some more blitzes. They've got some more packages going on here. They're getting a lot more comfortable and in the process, making Shumway less comfortable. some communication between the refs here on the field. But second down and 10. Another whistle blown. I think it's a play clock issue. I believe you're right. I think they had not started the play clock yet. There, we, it is fixed. And so now, it, once again, second down and 10 for the Knights. Shum way back to pass. Safe. And fumble, and looks like the Quakers fell on it. We talked about it. They had him blitz too much, and they did it at the right time. Yeah, that left corner blitz really caught Shumway by surprise. He was looking to his right side. He's a right-handed quarterback, and normally you can see that blitz coming from your strong side, from his right side but the play was designed to go to the left. Perfect blitz opportunity for the, the corner. I'm not sure if that's designed or if he's got an option on that, if he sees the play going to the right side. It was a fantastic play either way. It was shut down all on the left side. They had two receivers they could have gone to, but they had, they had three or four defenders here covering that whole situation. You see one, two, three, four bodies covering all those routes. Just well defended, a great play calling there on defensive side. So, now so first, first turnover of the game. I mentioned clean play, but here's the first turnover. First down and 10 for Adam Dixon and the Quakers. Dixon back to pass. He's got some pressure, and he's got a penalty flag. Looked like a holding call, but brought down 
by number 44, Southern Virginia, Michael Adra. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If I did not, let us know in the comment section down below, so and we will do our best to correct that. Mike Kelly, the Florida nat native, has brought some really powerful play inside right there. Something that the Knights needed. They really need somebody to come up and say, hey, I got you, right? I mean, this is what you need. When, when you're down, who's going to make the play? The Quakers have done a, finding Quakers have done a great job in finding receivers and, and Dixon with really solid uh, uh, passes where he's not putting that ball in dangerous positions. Then you're going to need somebody from the offensive line, or sorry, the defensive line or a linebacker to step in and make a play. So we first down and 20 for the Quakers, and you mentioned somebody stepping up. We mentioned the beginning of the game, the defenders at Southern Virginia lost, you know, just moving on with their lives and such. You have to find that guy who's going to make those plays. In the past years, it's been Leek Abadaka or Dallin Breen. Dixon back to pass yet again, and that was just a little too far out of reach. It was a wide open play, but he felt pressure and was an inaccurate throw. Yeah, again, two defensive backs, not necessarily understanding where each was supposed to be. It's hard to tell who was wrong and who was right in that, but they both jumped up, and then you have that deep out route open. There are three guys that jumped forward. Lack of be. understanding of who's supposed to cover the deep corner. Right. That's been a big communication error on that far side. That's where the last two touchdowns have been, has been on that far side. Dixon back to pass, corner, deep throw, and it's dropped. A well-thrown ball, and it was being tracked down by number one, Ace Taylor. Again, he's been causing a lot of havoc for Southern Virginia's defense so far tonight. Not able to ring that one in. Actually, excuse me. It was number three, yeah, that was number three. Antico Wynn Jr a senior from Columbus, Ohio. Similar situation with Southern Virginia had a couple possessions ago where he was looking over his left shoulder, it was going over his right shoulder, not able to make the adjustment in time, but a well-placed ball nonetheless. Yeah, he had a great shot 20. at it. He really did. A third down and 20 now, that's quite the distance to cover. Wilmington out as the play clock was Running to zeros. I mean, talk about having a possession like this at the right time for Southern Virginia's defense. The last two possessions, Wilmington's been able to really do whatever they wanted, score on long plays, and then to start off that possession with a sack, a holding penalty, and force an incompletion, this is exactly what you needed to kind of bring yourselves back up and keep yourselves from sliding down that muddy hill that can be bad momentum. And it's just the right time for the Knights. I mean, this second, the first quarter flew by. It really did. This third quarter, or the second quarter, has really come to a, a stall because we've had a lot more pass plays going on from this defense, offensive side of the, the Quakers. The Knights, if they can get a stop here in a good position to come back, you're only down by eight. Sorry, nine. No, eight. They're down by eight. Do my math. And... It, it, it's an opportunity for both teams right here. I, I think if you're Wilmington, you're really comfortable with what's been going on. Your defense is been playing well. I don't, or, you know, the, the, the w over the top play. Let's see if we can pin him down low, get 10 yards out of this, maybe six or seven, pin him in deep. You're in a good position. It does put Southern Virginia in an awkward situation, though. If they force incompletion or stop him on a short play, it's yeah, passed down the, top the field. In the middle. And caught and recovered. That is Junior. That is Atika Wynn Junior for the catch and score. Make it 27 to 13 on third down and 20. Able to find the open man for the score. He did such a good job coming across the face of the defender. So good to get inside and the safety late coming over. Thing was, the safety had to cover both sides. Either pass had an open man, right or left, the, the, the free safety had to make a, couldn't really make a choice to, to go either way. He had to read the quarterback's eyes if he was going to get there on time. Comes late. And that was Incredible Jacob play. Taloa coming in there at the last second, trying to force the completion, but in the process, takes himself out of the play to make the tackle and allowing the touchdown to occur. Make it 28-13 to 13 in favor of Wilmington College. 
So defensively, the wheels have kind of fallen off the bus a little bit for the Knights, and it's all come from these, these long pass plays, three of them. Like you said, it's been the air attack for Wilmington College so far that's really been the detriment of Southern Virginia, finding those open spaces past the cornerbacks and between the safeties. And Southern Virginia just doesn't seem to have an answer to that right now. Yeah, a couple times it's been scheme problems, uh, players not knowing whether we're in man or zone or who's going to cover what. And then a couple times it's just been they were outplayed. Yeah. The, the receiver went and made a, a better play than the defender. And you talk about the great hands on the receivers for Wilmington College. Again, like that play, you're being hit by two defenders at the same time. You come down with it. Then to gather your senses, get on your feet, and continue to the end zone, you can't you can't script it better than that. Wider Sir coaches over there on the other side, they're smiling, pretty big smiles right now. Yeah, they're doing it. The, the receivers are playing fantastic for the fighting Quakers. The stands are getting quite loud now. It's a beautiful noise when the crowd gets involved in a football game like this. This is a very short kick. Fair catch at the 28-yard line. You know, Jalen Troy made a smart play right there. Indeed, he did the soft. Call the fair catch. Get the ball. Put the offense back on. I've been very impressed uh, since latter half of last season with Jalen Troy and his ability to both be physical in the run game and also uh, great hands. He, he's a really good player. The Knights, I think, as, as he goes over the next two, two and a half years, will be able to take advantage of his skill sets. Absolutely. It's been a situation with the Knights where a tight end has been hard to find a consistent player for. And Jalen Troy, like you mentioned, is a good situation for them. And that's a penalty. Looks like fall start on Southern Virginia. Getting a little too excited. And so after that penalty, it looks like it'll be about a first and 15 situation. And in a situation like this, like you mentioned before, the wheels are kind of falling off a little bit. You're starting to see some players getting frustrated, some things getting exploited. If you're Coach Mulitalo, what is something you think you change in order to get these players to sort of wake up a little bit? Well, you're going to have to lean on your quarterback for now. We saw that he can make plays. I think it has to do with the opportunity for Shumway to get in, the, the RPO, uh, the option play. Let it. We've seen him make plays. Uh, with the with third and, or sec, first and 15, you were able to do a lot of running, but you've seen – the Wilmington Quakers really start to push up a little more. They're looking for the run. Their linebackers are getting to the run better. They're they're making free runs because of the defensive line. And and the Knights, I think, are going to have to find some adjustments. Short, quick passes. Let your athletes on the get on the ball. Shumway in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Jake Wood yet again. Getting on the outside. Another penalty flag on the field. I would expect this to be against Southern Virginia as well. And that's been their most successful runs when they've gotten Jake Wood to the outside. Get him onto the perimeter, make sure that he can get a stiff arm or two, make some defenders miss. Jones got called for holding as he grabbed the jersey there. He was trying to bring it. The frustrating part there was his de defender, he was blocking, he really wasn't going to get to the, the ball. Uh, right. Wood is already outside. And that's always the most frustrating part of penalties is when it's not even involved in the play, right? It becomes a senseless penalty. So second yeah. down and 20. Halfback draw to Jake Wood. It's not going to go very far. So the opportunity for the Knights to get themselves into a fighting position, get across midfield, create some opportunities for themselves. It 
me tough when you're third and 19, uh, you're third and, what are we at, 19, right? At this point, you kind of just have to take what you can get, make sure that you hope for a good punt. Well, uh, the, the Quakers scored on a uh, third and 20. Shumway's looking deep. He's got some pressure rolling out to the outside. Reversing field. He's got some open lanes and some blockers, and he's going to trip on his own feet and lose about three yards. Looks like something might come out of nothing on that one, but at the last second, I believe maybe tripped up on his own guy. Yeah, that's just a tough situation for the Knights. Great job from the Quakers to make adjustments on what the Knights were doing. They've shut down the run. They really have. They've done a, make, a great job of making sure that they don't get tricked twice. It's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And the Quakers have decided to not be fooled twice. So Jake Shank will be punting it away for Southern Virginia. Barely Lincoln's gets the punt off. Kick. Again. That'll be inside Southern Virginia territory. Looks like Jake Shank was shaken up on that play. Yeah, I don't know if he got ran into or not. I'll have to look at that. That was a tough play. Just came down funny on his on his leg. He's been one of the the most important players on the offense for Shumway. Shumway has put a lot of balls to him. So four and a half minutes left to play, and the Quakers will have possession at Southern Virginia's 37-yard line. Yeah, some great field position again for the Quakers. Second series in a row where they've had an opportunity to start on the Knights' side of the field. A solid pass on the inside, and that's going to be caught. That'll be for a first down. Dixon has no pressure. The tall quarterback's just sitting back there surveying the field without any pressure. He's going to pick apart the defense. That was Jamon Clark for the first down reception. If you're in the Knights, four minutes left in this half, you cannot let up a score here. A score right here is detrimental. It makes it really hard. And in for the sack. My goodness. Comes barreling in. That's it's my Kelly Tui. We'll just call him Tui. <laughs> Mike Kelly was coming in hard right there. Ducks, ducks the shoulder and just puts it through the belly of Dixon. It appeared he took the offensive lineman that was blocking him with him. With him for the ride. And did he broke right through, cut, uh, shot the gap, and delivered the blow on Dixon. So second down and 15, Dixon back to pass. They're going to do a halfback screen here. A lot of room. And it's going to be close to a first down. Might be a yard short. Yeah, that was a great job identifying where the Knights would be coming from. I mean, they saw the pressure from the play before. They thought, okay, they're bringing the heat. Let's make them pay for it. So we'll be third down and two with just under three minutes left to play in this first half. Dixon back to pass. He's got a one-on-one -on -one receiver. Beautifully caught, cut to the inside, touchdown, Wilmington College. Touchdown pass by Dixon. I mean, Wilmington's offense has really come alive in this second quarter. Yeah, and, and it's really a lack of pressure. You know, the Knights did get the sack, but any time that Dixon's been able to sit back there and look around, he's got athletic receivers, and that defender coming, or the offensive coming around the defensive back and the place that Dixon put that. And that perfect incredible. window between two defenders. I mean, that's textbook right there. I mean, that's a situation where defensive back is looking in the backfield and doesn't know where the break is happening. The kick is up and it is good. Makes it 35 to 13 in favor of Wilmington College. Just under three minutes left to play in this first half. You're starting to feel the energy sort of die down on Southern Virginia's side. You got to find a way. You got to make a play. You got to make some kind of play to get you back, get some momentum on your side, get yourself energized. 
Right, you're looking for anything positive. You, you got to be able to go into the locker room feeling like there's hope. And, and when you have 254, I mean, you get a touchdown and you're right there. Looked really even all through that first quarter. And it's, it's been very difficult for the Knights on both sides of the ball. That's a big difference in the first quarter. I mean, it's, it's not just one side. It's both sides. The defense is giving up big plays. The offense can't move the ball. And the biggest key here is, like you mentioned, Wilmington, Wilmington making adjustments to cover Southern Virginia defensively. But Southern Virginia not making the adjustments offensively to combat that. You know, they've been trying some of the same things. Like Jake Wood, he's a solid back, but they've tried some of the similar running plays back to back to back. It's become predictable. The pass plays, same thing. And they've been able to get pressure on Shumway. And, again, the difference is adjustments. you got to make adjustments. Yeah, and it's also been the, the athleticism, the athleticism of the receivers, and I think the offensive line, at, at least on the offensive side for Wilmington, they've made a. It's been a big difference. The Knights have been able to get a couple sacks, but those are. It's not consistent pressure. Right. If he's going to have a full three and a half seconds to survey the field, Dixon's going to make the play. He's shown he can do it. And that was Jonah McFarland fielding that kick for Southern Virginia. Makes it first down and ten yard line again just under three minutes plenty of time to just put everything that's happened in the back of your mind get on there on offense and just get yourself in a rhythm even if you don't score in this possession get a long drive going get a good rest for your defense and again like you said get something positive going on Shumway in the gun muffed snap no one's been able to handle it and Looks like Wilmington College may have jumped on it once again. Uh, they call it second down, Knights ball. Looks like the Knights did jump back on it. The Knights merely avoid, nearly avoiding another disastrous play. Neither Wood or Shumway able to get their hand on the ball to really carry out the play. I mean, it's hard. That ball came really fast from the center, but it was right to Shumway's hands. Right. But it was it was humming. That ball was moving really fast. Shumway in the gun, second down and 12. Back to pass to Shumway. He's going to throw it deep. Yeah, and mean. a penalty flag looks like it'll be thrown. Davis grabbing on the jersey of Wester. Jalon Covington, I believe, will be the guilty. Excuse me, indeed, that was Quinton Davis. Not sure Davis needed to grab him right there. He was already on the outside. But it's another example. Yeah. Oh, looks like they're not going to throw the flag here. No flag. Referees got together, decided that it wasn't a penalty. I think the key thing is that the ball was just it was out of reach. It wasn't catchable. So, and plus, it didn't look like it was that aggressive of a defensive play there. Not a lot of grabbing happening. Yeah, I, I think that was probably the right call when you look at the replay. Davis was really not happy with the call, and, he, and you could see why. He really didn't do much to Wester right there. So third down and 12 for Southern Virginia. Got a trips right. Shumway's looking right. Setting up the screen to Wood. Well defended. That is number nine. Jake Sheriff, the junior from Hamilton, Ohio. Staying at home, understanding like he sees the offensive lineman going to the outside. Okay, this is a screen pass. I'm going to play it that way. So that was... Uh an opportunity for the, the offensive line just kind of got ran by and just great linebacking play. So that makes it fourth down and eight, and so the Knights will punt it away with a minute and a half left in this first half. Yeah, one timeout left for the Quakers, short punt. And a bad bounce. 
That's been the one thing that both teams have really struggled with is the kicking game. Punting and kicking have really been a struggle for both teams, getting a solid punt off, and that's made it to where both teams have had moments of great field position. I haven't really been able to settle on who they're going to have punt the ball. Shank may have gotten injured when he landed uh, on that rugby-style punt the last time he was out there. We haven't seen him. I don't think we've seen him since he was out since that last punt. I believe you are right on that one as Wilmington will set up shop at Southern Virginia's 38-yard line. This is the starting position the last three series for the solid run here has got a first down and more that is number 28 that being ben hobbs the junior from camden ohio yeah first run for him does a lot with it and it goes out of bounds i believe to i believe it stops the clock if he did indeed get out of bounds before the play was over Hey, out to the offside. Same play, this time counter pull. As we stopped after a gain of about three or four on that one. Now just under a minute. I can expect Wilmington to take one last shot before the half. I mean, at this point, why not? When you have uh, big Brandon Mitchell, all 300 pounds of him coming across that, that's a, that's a load on the pole. Nearly intercepted by Southern Virginia's number one, Jamar Robinson. That was thrown way behind by Adam Dixon. I take that back. Sorry, that was Brandon McGraw that's in there. I just, I've, I've been impressed with the athleticism of the offensive line. The, the right side of the offensive line for the Quakers has done a great job pulling, uh, protecting that side. It, when, when your offensive line is gelling the way they're gelling right now, it's, I, to me it's been the big difference on the offensive end. Dixon can do just about whatever he wants right now. And when you have an offensive line you can rely on like that, again, it makes you very comfortable and you can be the good player that you're capable of being because you know your offensive line's got your back. Dixon back to pass. He's feeling a little bit of pressure from behind. And Dixon's brought down for a sack. We were just praising the offensive line, and then that happens. It's the announcer's curse, I tell you. But, you know, that one really wasn't on the offensive line. He held that ball. That, that pocket was a solid pocket. Right. He bails out because he doesn't find the, the receiver that he wants. You give him 2.8 seconds, and that's all, he need. that's all he's supposed to need. I believe head coach for Wilmington. Indeed, they will call a timeout. Corey Filipovich in his second season as head coach for Wilmington University calls a timeout with two seconds remaining in this half. With a fourth down and seven, I'd imagine they try for a longer field goal as far as the standards of Division Three is concerned. Yeah, I have not been, I'm not convinced that, that he has the leg to hit this. Just to watching the extra points, I could be wrong. Because again, we've talked about the weakness of both teams being the kicking game, not having very strong punts or kickoffs. So I believe you are right. So maybe perhaps he just simply wants to take one last good shot down the field. It's fourth down with two seconds. I mean, you can't really go wrong either way. As long as you don't throw a pick six, you're just fine going into halftime. Agreed. And if you're Southern Virginia, you're preaching your defense. We have two seconds left. Hold the line for two seconds. Let's get to the locker room on a positive note. Like you said, something positive to give us momentum that we can work on going into the second half. Yeah, when the uh, opposing team starts on your own 38 and you hold them to, to no point, you can feel really good about that, but can't speak too soon as the Quakers are going to go for it here. Dixon's going to walk up in the pocket. He's going to throw. And it's incomplete, so the Knights will get that much-needed stop to end this first half with the score being 35-13 to 13 in favor of Wilmington. Again, we mentioned before, Wilmington really came alive in that second quarter, able to do whatever they wanted offensively, utilizing all the weapons at their disposal. And so if you're Coach Militalo in that locker room during this halftime, what are you telling your players? Well, it, the hard part here is 
it's both sides of the ball. Right. Right. The, moving the ball. Wilmington adjusted, brought a safety up. Their linebackers started making more plays in the run game. And the Knights weren't able to counter with their pass game. Weren't able to find that spot in the middle of the field where that middle that safety was coming forward. So I think offensively they've got to find a way to counter the additional player in the box. They've mm -hmm. got Shumway's going to have to find some players right in, in, right in the pass game. On the defensive end, uh, they've got to start. They may have to simplify what play calls they're doing because the defensive backs are getting a little confused on what they're doing. So I think they need to simplify that a little bit. But also, when they get any pressure at all, things happen that are positive for the Knights. So as long as if Wilmington can keep, uh, keep uh, Dixon clean, it's going to continue to be a, a long game for the Knights. If the Knights can get their defensive backs playing a little bit better and, and find a little more success in the pressure, I think they'd be okay. Coach Montalo, you cannot talk about score. Right. You got to talk about inside. You got to talk about hard. You got to talk about us. Nothing external. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, I believe one thing that Coach Montalo might even say at halftime: nobody cares. Work harder. That's a motto they've had for this full team for the past off season. And with that, we will go into halftime with a halftime show here and enjoy the festivities here at the field. We will be back for the second half. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause and welcome back to the field our very own Southern Virginia University Rocky Knights.
Welcome back to the fields here at Southern Virginia University for tonight's contest, the second half of tonight's contest between the Fighting Quakers of Wilmington College and your Southern Virginia University. So far, it's been a one-sided affair, aside from the fact that this game started off neck and neck. The story of this game is just that, starting off neck and neck, Quakers taking over the second. Just kind of explain to us what, what things broke down for Southern Virginia in that second quarter. Well, it, you got to look at the passing defense, right? Yes. I mean, the Quakers have not had to run. They've had, they had that 10-yard run to the outside late in the second quarter. They have not done hardly any running at all in the second half. Now, we got to apologize. The live stats are down for, for a moment. First game, we always working through things. It's the way it is. So we don't have all the stats in front of us. But clearly, the Quakers decided that they could exploit the second level of the Knights defense. And they, if the Knights can get pressure, we talked about that at the close of half, if they can get a, maybe simplify the calls, get on the same page, I still think they have a chance to show well. You don't have to win the game to prepare. This is not a conference game. Right. I mean, you always want to win the game. You don't want to finish 2-8 and eight again. But it's not a conference game. So the idea is to build, to learn, to grow, and get better. For Wilmington, you just got to keep doing what you're doing. If there's adjustments made, I think we'll see some more run out of them later on. Right now, I don't think they change a thing. I absolutely agree. As Southern Virginia kicks off to start this half, and it's filled with their own 20. He's got a gaping hole to run through. He's got some space and some speed. He's going to get all the way out close to midfield. That was number four, Seth Massey. Able to get that one. And you mentioned Wilmington passing the ball significantly amount at the end of the first half. Usually when a team forces an offense to be one-dimensional, it's usually a good thing. Not in this case, though. Wilmington was able to utilize that one aspect of their offense and just completely exploited what Southern Virginia wasn't able to stop. To, to borrow a phrase from former BYU coach, former University of Virginia coach Bronco Mendenhall, being assignment sound is the fundamental component of a defense. Yes. And right now, you saw it right there. The gap that opened up was somebody and getting pushed after they got there. Like, you got to be assignment sound and know what your role is. And a gaping hole. Bowling over defenders inside the 30. That was number 28. Trying to get the number here for you, folks. Number 28. That is Ben Hobbs. The beast in the backfield. Yeah, he, he hits the line, and now going quick. This is something we didn't see earlier. Another receiver screen, getting the ball out to Ace Taylor would be a great idea anytime. That was interesting because that was a quick snap. They got yeah. in, no huddle, got the ball out quick. Um, yeah, Hobbs, he, that was fantastic because he hit that right side of the line, didn't have anything inside and bounced it outside. Really solid run. Dixon in the gun. He's going to hand it off to Hobbs again. Got some more space, and he's going to run it close to a first down, but stuffed right before the line to gain. And you mentioned the quick snap afterwards. One thing we talked about that Wilmington has done a great job of doing is adapting and to change things up. They, Like you said, they hadn't done that at all in the first half. They knew that coming into the second half, Southern Virginia would make adjustments, would look to expect some things that Wilmington had done, and they decided, you know what, we're going to go a hurry up. We're going to change it up on you. We're going to throw you out of your rhythm to start the second half. Yeah, and that was clearly a planned situation where they were going to go first two plays, here's what they are, we'll run them quick. It's a third down and one yard to go inside night territory. Some confusion on Wilmington's side offensively, getting the call in from the sideline. Got the playoff just in time. And he's going to barely get the first down. Was dancing around the backfield a little bit, but gains about seven yards on that one. Now Hobbs is doing a fantastic job making reads and, and bouncing off. And then he's making something out of nothing. You know, he's getting met in the backfield. Uh, the, the original gaps that he's supposed to be hitting aren't there, and he's finding and, and improvising to get himself 5, 7, 10, all on this drive. It's been very impressive. And you heard the Wilmington fans here on this side of the stadium say get the first down quit worrying about finding an open lane just put your shoulder down and get the first down and eventually he did so so first and 10 on the Knights 19 yard line man in motion Dixon back to pass one on one chance here 
a huge hit in the end zone. That's going to draw the flag. That is on Southern they're Virginia's number 22, Dylan Andrew. Player. Yeah, Dylan. They're going to call that a defensive player hit. It wasn't late, but they'll be very careful on, defense, on defenseless players. And it kind of shows just how much the game has evolved. Ten years ago, that have been a solid, hard-hitting play. People have been hooting and hollering and cheering. Nowadays, you just can't do that. And, and look, the, the hit was clean in terms of technique. Right. Not to the head, shoulder hit, but it was defensive. In fact, they're getting together and conversing here. They might wave this off. They did it before. They might wave this flag off. Because like you said, he did a good job of making sure he hit him with his shoulder. And he didn't go high. Yeah, they're... They're waving the flag off. That's a really great job by this officiating crew. Second time that they've done this, where they've gotten together and discussed the play, that is so impressive to me, to be able to have the, the wherewithal to talk it over and the humility to say, yeah, let's, let, I, I think you're right. And some confusion on Southern Virginia's side, getting some defenders in. I believe there's going to be a timeout called here. And that's painful because if you want to get back into this game, score some quick touchdowns, and you need some time at the end, you need all your timeouts. So that confusion to start this half, not a good thing. Yeah, you're definitely going to need that in, in, in the latter part of this half. There's no doubt. And so it'll be second down and 10 for the Wilmington Fighting Quakers. Just 12, minute, 12 and a half minutes left in this second half. It's been a beautiful night all night long as far as weather is concerned. You could not ask for a better night to play some football. Yeah, I mean, that's if you want to, you got to find positives if you're a, a Knights fan. And, and if you're anywhere in Rockbridge County or, or, or close, you've got to come experience this. The middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains, you, you can't get a, a better venue for a Division III football game, the Knights Stadium. It's just fantastic. So second down and 10 inside the 20 of Southern Virginia. Dixon in the backfield with Hobbs. Got two receivers on the, on the near side. Dixon's going to fake the handoff. Going to be too low to the ground and incomplete and make it third down and 10. Yeah, receiver had to go down to get that one. That's a really tough catch to make. So an important stop here for Southern Virginia to start this half. Can you force this three and out? Can you, or can you make them go for it on fourth and long? Yeah, if you're the Knights, you don't want to give up a score on the opening drive if you want any hope of really finding a, uh, you know, you, if you score two touchdowns, you start to have some hope. And you just can't give up that first touchdown. Batted down and intercepted by the Knights. He's got some space and some speed. He's running over. And gets tackled at the 31 yard line. Big Kimani Vai Vai with the interception, and he's rumbling and mumbling and stumbling down the field. I mean, you felt the earthquake, and as he was running, tumbling over defenders, what an amazing reaction. Check I mean, the, my. Check the Richter scale anywhere close. <laughs> There's some. Uh, geologists right now that are wondering what just happened <laughs> and add to that the cheering from the crowd as well that adds to it I mean that's the type of play Southern Virginia needed they needed that turnover my goodness again that'll put some hope let's see what coach Hoffman can pull out of his bag of tricks right here I'm not saying you got to go to the the fancy play but some way's got to find a way to capitalize on the momentum and the energy that just came into the life. You felt the energy of the stadium pick up, and, and that's what these night fans are looking for. They're just looking for something to cheer for. Some going to hand it off to Jake Wood. He's going to fall forward for about three or four yards there, and it's, it's always a good day when the defense can whip out the turnover sword. That's always a good day for Southern Virginia when you can do that. Yeah, so both teams now with, with the turnover. That ended up only being a two-yard gain for Southern Virginia. Make it a second down and eight. Got two receivers on either side. Shumway looks right. Throws to the outside. 
And it's dropped. A good route, but just a little outside the outstretched hands. That was of number 18. That being Caden Hyder, the junior from Roosevelt, Utah. So third down and eight. You got, you got to at least pick up five yards in this play. You cannot let the momentum of that turnover go to waste. So get at least five yards, make it a manageable fourth down, or better yet, just convert the third down right here. Yeah, that's definitely what you're thinking if you're a Knights fan. You love, if you're a Quaker, the fact that your team could step up and hold what's going, you know, that, that turnover could definitely be a big momentum switch, but if your defense can hold them. Shumway's got some pressure. Throws deep to the right side. He's got a man. Jake Shank is going to snag it. He bobbles and catches it in the end zone. Touchdown, Knights. So Shank, who we had not seen much of since that bad punt where he came down hard on his leg, goes out, bounces the ball around, does his best juggling act, comes down with the ball. Wow. I'm pretty sure he had that in his hands three or four different times on the way down, but able to bring it down for the touchdown. What a catch with a defender in his face. The defensive back thought for sure that that ball was gone. He had knocked it down. He's looking around like, how is the referee right now throwing his hands up for a touchdown? There's no way. Yeah, that was number 21, Sean Hollenbeck. It's the point after attempt here for Southern Virginia by number 40, Joe Kim. The kick is up, very short, but accurate enough for the PAT. And here Shank's got a little bit of hitch to his get along coming off the field. Tough kid. Like you mentioned, he fell to the turf early on in that second quarter and hadn't seen a lot of action since. Again, showing his toughness. Going out there making that amazing play, a play you desperately needed in a game that was slipping away from you. So now the score being 35 to 20, still in favor of Wilmington College, but now some momentum on the side of the Knights. And you kind of felt the air leave Wilmington's sideline a little bit after that. Yeah, they're a, a very excitable team. They, they've been in the face of the Knights after, after every, I, you know, if, if you're a coach on that sideline, you love the energy that you see the team bringing. The way you counter that is you've got to make plays. You yes. have to be able to look at that person who's yelling at you saying, I'm better than you, and make a play. And whether or not you come back with your own you know, smack, or whether you just uh, say, hey, my play he talks for me. Either way, you've got to make a play like the two plays that we shot. We see Vi Vi, we see Shank, both make plays for the Knights, and, and then you got the crowd in your, on your side, people are excited. That ball could go out of bounds, it stays in. And field it inside the 10. This is a dangerous play for Wilmington, but he's got a gap here, and brought the ball, the Knights fall on it. That it indeed belongs to the down. Knights. <laughs> Coach Mulitalo and that Knights sideline right now is fired up. They're still clearing the pile here. They declared it Southern Virginia ball. And it indeed belongs to the Knights. It was a good return getting it out towards the 25, but stripped at the last possible second. <laughs> you have number 27, Caleb Highland, come up showing My his goodness. excitement, cheering to the crowd. We got them. And so it'll be Southern Virginia ball inside the 25 yard line. That was number 27 for Southern Virginia, picking up that fumble. That is Kalem Highland, the sophomore from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. You know, football is such a fickle taskmaster. It, it, the football gods giveth and the football gods taketh away. And you <laughs> never really know what's coming next. I don't think I've ever heard it put a better way than that, honestly. Football can swing at any given moment on any given day. Shumway in the gun here. I say take a shot. Shumway looks to his left. Pump fake. Throws the corner of the end zone. He's got a man. And it's grabbed. Hester gets the ball. Bounds. Catches the ball out of bounds. 
I believe they're throwing the flag because he had been forced out of bounds beforehand then came back into the field of play. Well, the conversation's going to be, did he get forced out of bounds? Right. Or did he go about out of bounds on his own accord? You cannot be the first to touch the ball if you go out of bounds on your own accord. And from what we can see here, you can't really see the... So they are going to call an illegal touching on him. Let's make it second down for the Knights. I, I like the idea. Taking the shot right away. Going to the corner of the end zone. I think if you're Southern Virginia, though, you maybe try the other side. You have more space to work with. Yeah, going to the boundary side is tough when you're going to throw that over the top ball. Wester may have had more space on the boundary, but it was there. Give it to one of your best players to make a play. Second down and 10 for the Knights. The crowd is coming alive. Jake Wood with the carry. He's going to bounce to the outside. He's got some space. 16-yard line. Making a short third down situation. Yeah, that was a really big run for Wood to come up and give the Knights a third and short. Again, this makes it a very manageable third down here. And, and given that you're down by 15, which is by no means uh, a, a giveaway where you're looking at Wilmington, you're like, we got this done. 15 points is not a lot. You, you, but still, with the way that Wilmington has moved the ball, you might see Coach Ed go for it. Shumway in the gun. Down. He's going to fake the handoff, roll out to his right side. He's going to throw it to the side of the end zone. Oh, did he tip it in? He tipped he it tipped in. He's got the, the beat toe. Of Touchdown, Knights! Doing his best Sammy Davis Jr. impersonation and tip-tapping that line down the back of the end zone. Incredible play by Chase Wester. The BYU transfer showing his work. Chase Wester was the intended target of the other play where he had illegal touching, but instead, you know, he says, okay, I'm in bounds. I'm here to make the play. Let's get a touchdown. Here's your illegal touch right here. <laughs> <laughs> so now score stands 35-26. The Knights feigning the two-point conversion. In fact, it looks like they might go for it. Nope. Fake once again. They will kick the PAT. They got to hurry up, though. Play clock is a factor here. Two seconds on the play clock. They get it away. That and was it is good. Extra point. Makes it an eight-point ball game with ten and a half minutes left in the third quarter. I mean, just like that, it's a ball game all over again. So this game has turned on Big plays, turnover, big play from uh, a Shank while he was injured, five eye. The Knights, you asked, what do they need to change? Nothing I said <laughs> mattered. Like, this shows <laughs> why you and I are up here, because we don't really know what we're talking about, <laughs> because it had nothing to do with anything other than a couple dudes making a play. Right. So I'm gonna man, I'm gonna go back to the way back machine and you can ask me where the knights need to change. Have a guy make a play. Exactly. Just have a guy make a play. Have someone step up, be the guy to go in there, throw some people around, make the smart decisions, make the big plays. And again, eight point ball game in a game that was escaping Southern Virginia late in the second quarter. Yeah, they, they were looking not only like they couldn't hang with Wilmington, but they looked deflated. They looked like they they were looked uninspired. And but that's the thing, when you have players that will make a play, a vibe vibe, a shake, these are these are a Wester uh, with this great pass from Shumway. These are guys that are senior players, upperclassmen making plays. Another shank kick. And as we tripped up. No turnover this time as he crosses the 30-yard line. There are some words being said here. Number six for Wilmington. That, of course, is Zach Schmidt. Not very happy with how that play turned up. You know, I want to go back uh, in a minute, talk about, I love looking at the roster. Uh, of the Knights, where you look down across this thing and you see nearly every state in the country represented. It's a really cool thing to bring together players from all over the country and and be able, in Division Three especially, bring them together and have them fight for a team here in a small school in Central Virginia. Hobbs gets the handoff and he's going to take it for about a three. He's still going. 
He's going to take it for about a two or three yard gain on that one. You know, there's this unique draw to Southern Virginia University where it's a, it's a school that's aligned with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And because of that, there's this kind of unique outreach where they just Absolutely. are able to bring players from all over the country. And Coach Ed really tries to capitalize on the family idea of that. And that play is going to be stopped short after a gain of one yard. Kind of going off of what you said, one thing that Coach Mulitalo always says to his players, he says, play for your brothers. Play for your brothers every single day in practice and during your games. And when you play for, like you said, family or your brothers, you're willing to fight for each other. You're willing to step up and, like we've talked about, make those big plays. And right now they need another big play, third down and seven yards to go. They have a chance to make another stop and continue this momentum swing. Wilmington needs to play right here. They, they, they've given up two quick touchdowns. They need to find that, that receiver spot. Offensive line. Dixon steps up. And what a is great <laughs> catch. Wow. And I am so impressed with Ace Taylor. But it is two yards short. Do you go for it here? With what I think it, if you're Wilmington, you have two? to. I think I'll tell you, you what, have they to. are not afraid to put it all on the line. I, I love this coaching staff of the Quakers. Both coaching staffs have been very aggressive tonight, willing to put players out there and make plays. It looks like they will elect to punt it away. This is the, but you know, this is, I, I think you, you look at the, the analytics and, and you might say, you know, go for it. But analytics don't take into account momentum and exactly. those kind of things. And you got to believe, uh, if you're you know, on the coaching staff of the Quakers, that, that our defense still can manage through this. It, and it looks like it was muffed. Southern Virginia's got to get on it. And it's recovered by the Quakers. And this is what I'm talking about. You, like, you got to feel and know that this team that you were coaching in the second quarter, it's the same team. Yeah. Right? And that you're going to have guys make plays again. And at that point, Southern Virginia, you had just made it a massive stop that you needed. And then at that point, if it goes over your head, let it go. You have to let it go. If, you, if you're not going to confidently catch it, let it go. Well, That's those are hard. You know, I mean, he, he, I think he just underplayed it, and you're, you're not wrong in that. It, it, it's a hard decision to make in the moment because of where he's set up. And, and, and Chase want, Wester wants so bad to make plays. Yes. Like, he really believes that he has worked so hard to get himself in a position to make plays. And it's hard to tell a kid, don't make the play. Very know, it's true. so hard. Quakers in the red zone. He's got some pressure on Dixon, and he's going to get brought down right at the line of scrimmage. There's a flag on the field. So this, now, I did say the pressure has to come from the Knights, right? If they're going to get this passing situation under control, they've got to get a little pressure to Dixon because he's so good when he sits back there and surveys. And he's got the height on him, so he can see over the line. He can see everything. But that play, of course, is going to be brought back after the penalty. Make it first down and 20. And so, again, they had a situation in the second quarter where it was third down and 20-something, and they led up a scoring play. You can't let lightning strike twice. Dixon drops back to pass. Throws to his right side. A short play. Yeah, and it's forced incompletion. Yeah, Robinson out of California. Doing a great job with the Chaparral High School product, well known for their athletics at Chaparral. Does a great job. Another holding but penalty. Forcing that, that penalty, that was the interior line for the Knights. As as you said, Vi Vi and by Kelly Tui combining on the inside, they're forcing the interior offensive line to have to try to compensate for their movement. And you've had two holding plays as a consequence. Now make it first down and about 30 yards. It's first down and uh, I think the first down line's out in Tooele, Utah. <laughs> it's like the uh, moment in the replacements film. It's fourth and 35. I've never seen this in my life. It's fourth and Roosevelt, Utah is what it is. <laughs> Got two receivers on either side. The first For down Dixon. here is a really big play. They don't have to get all of it. Looks like might be a delay a game on Wilmington. Wilmington's got a little flustered here on this possession. You know who's really happy right now? 
Chase Wester. <laughs> Chase Wester is loving what's going on right now. You You're know, you love being, correct. sorry, go ahead. You're absolutely correct on that one. I mean, after a fumble like that, you think, oh, they're gonna go in and score easily. Now it's first and 35. <laughs> Dixon back to pass, he's got pressure. He's gonna throw a nice screen set up here and some space to run. Weaving in and out of defenders, makes up a lot of that ground. Wow, what a play. And Dixon stood in, he got laid out by my Kelly too. And he stood in there, made that pass. This is, how many, I think that's like the third time they've thrown that little wide receiver screen. Not really a bubble screen, they're just one receiver out there to block. Yeah, and Etika Wynn Jr. with the athleticism to make people miss and follow those blockers. Yeah, yeah, and then the blockers from the, the that right side of the line got out ahead of that play. That was a really well executed play from the Quakers. So second down and 16, much more manageable than what they were just in. And it'll be incomplete. Looks like there was just a trip up on the route. And it'll be a clean incompletion, third down and 16. Dylan doing a really good job, the Hunter High School product out of West Valley City, Utah, held up. He could have done what he did before. He got, and he got fortunate that the flag was waved off on the defenseless receiver call. He could have done the same thing. And um, he held up, it was a really smart play by him. So third down and 16 to go. Dixon in the backfield, looking left. Throws incomplete, no flags on the field. Makes it fourth down and 16. Balboa had given up the inside to that quick slant, but the ball had some heat on it and goes right through the hands of the receiver. And so it looks like they're going to attempt the field goal here. We mentioned the kicking woes for both teams so far. And you're right, just a little bit too much heat on that pass. But Balboa did a great job jamming and, and forcing the receiver to not be in a comfortable position to get his hands up and make the play. This is Seth Best on the kick attempt. The kick is up. It looks like it has the leg just and it's good. It. Just sneaks it over. Make it 38 to 27, so an 11 point ball game. The Knights breathing a sigh of relief. They could have let up an easy touchdown after the turnover. They make the defensive stand, thankfully, a lot to Wilmington's own penalty, self-inflicted wounds, but they're able to hold their ground and limit it to a field goal. So it's still a manageable deficit with the way your offense has been playing. Yeah, I, you know, if you're a Wilmington fan right now, are you? I mean, I, I would like to ask if you know, you're sitting up first and 35 and we get three points out of it, you gotta feel really good about that, except, Absolutely. except you were like almost first and goal. Like that, you know, and, and then you end up first and 35 and, and you still manage some points. And, and you know, you don't gotta win by 20 to win. Very true. You can win by one and you get the win. And so the resiliency to come back from that first and 35, I'm just, I'm really impressed. I'm impressed right now with what the Knights have been able to do. Players make plays, but this resiliency, Dixon to, to find the passes and make things happen and recover from this. I'm sure in that huddle, he's like, it's okay guys. Right. It's all right, we're gonna be fine. First and 35, you know, we've got, we practice first and 35 all the time, right? <laughs> I'm sure they do at I'm some sure point they in time. Do. No, nobody practices in first <laughs> 35, but nevertheless, three points go up on the board, and Knights get a chance to, to answer. Knights to return. Fielded well here. He's got a good lane. And he's going to bring it out to around the 35-yard line. You just know that special teams coach, Justin, there is some extracurricular activity here. No flags, so it all... Turns out well. But like I was saying, special teams coach for Southern Virginia, Justin Hughie, you know for a fact, before that kickoff, he was preaching, okay, make sure you catch it, then decide what to do with the ball. Most important thing is to field the ball and not give it away. Well, you know, the, so we don't have the camera on us here, but we're actually outside the booth because the booth that normally we would be in in different situations is the defensive or the away team's coaches. So we're out here underneath us are the away team's fans. I just enjoy hearing <laughs> the conversations that go on down there. They were not happy with what just happened there, but. Shumway getting a five yard gain. I love the fact that Shumway covered the ball on that run. The awareness he knew a defender was next to him and he made sure to not carelessly give it away. 
but a good solid five yard gain for Shumway. Yeah, and that's what both teams are gonna have to do right now is try to curtail the momentum play. Let's let's go and you know the Steelers coach loves to play call them spa, splash plays. It's a really funny comment. Splash plays. You, you gotta limit the splash plays of the opposing team because there have been a whole slew of them. Like right now this has been cannonball city and we're both wet. So many <laughs> splash splash plays. Shumway in the gun. He's gonna hand it off to Wood. And he's going to churn his legs forward for about three yards, make a third down and manageable. Look like Colby Hyder's leg got caught underneath. Oh, no, sorry, that's um, that's Jones. Third down and two yards. Apologize, that's, that's uh, Malik Jones, I think, whose leg got caught underneath the pile. And so with six minutes left to go in this third quarter, we hope that he is all right as the medical team goes onto the field and assists him. But again, you talk about you talk about football games, right? And I've seen a lot of games in my time where I've, I've seen one team take the momentum and ride it the rest of the way and just make an absolute route. Southern Virginia could have easily done that tonight. They could have easily laid down and said, you know what, this is their game. They're taking it over. We'll just take it laying down. That's not what they're doing today. It's been a back and forth battle. You've seen both teams step up in big moments. Well, look, let's be a, a, a little honest here. Th that's happened before in the past where of course. the Knights had kind of decided uh, we can't come back. I'm not saying they gave up, but just decided, you know, we can't run this. It's out of reach. And there may have been players on this sideline that were feeling that way. You know who one of them wasn't? Kamani Vaivai. <laughs> right? You know who one of them wasn't? Chase Wester. Exactly. Shank, right? Shumway. Right? There, there were dudes that, that just said, I'm going to come out and make a play. And sometimes it just falls into your lap. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas. Here you go, Kamani Vaivai. But it wasn't even just that he made the interception. Like, what did he do with it after that? He that ran amazing. over yeah, six or ran, seven yeah. people. Yeah, like, you know, that's the stuff that, that games turn on. Now the Knights have... A slot receiver, two receivers on the right side, one is here on the left side. But just side. like Dixon getting a first and 35 into three points, right? Like these are the things that really make it. And it's going to be a short run. They'll be close to the first down marker, a penalty flag on the field. You got a, a Knights helmet down. They might, once your helmet, yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to call this. This is interesting. There might be a defensive hands to the face if that's the case. Because it came in after the play was over. Yeah, I, I wonder. I, I feel like there's a rule that if your helmet comes off, like you have to stop playing or something in college. Well, with college, if your helmet falls off during a play, you have to sit out the next play, then come well, back onto the yeah, field Yeah, that play. for sure. So we'll wait to hear the announcement from head ref Scott Keister. Here's the announcement. It's so unsportsmanlike conduct on Southern Virginia. Yeah. So make a third down. We could not hear Mr. Kaiser's call. So that'll put Southern Virginia way back. Maybe some words are spoken, maybe an extra little shoving and pushing at the end of the play. Been some issues with the microphones to the refs today. Look, it's the first game, man. <laughs> when it's the first game, you never know what's going to happen. You get the kinks worked out. It, first games of, of football seasons are like, you know, Apollo 13, right? You just got to work your way through it. Shumway throws it deep. Caught by Johansson. Wow, Johansson going up so high. But it makes it a manageable fourth down if they indeed decide to go for it. I mean, he stretched up as far as he could to snag that one. thats I don't know how, how people back at home view this, but if you think about it, they have these shoulder pads they have to get past, right? They have to reach up, they have to extend. That is an impressive catch from Johansson. Yeah, this is going to be tight. Knights, a little delayed. They may have to end up calling a timeout here. Already down to 10 seconds on the play clock. They have to hurry up here. They're running to the line. They want to get the playoff. Five, three, two, one. And they do. Oh, and it's stuffed behind the line. 
That was such a fantastic play. Jared Lee, the linebacker, who's made a couple of plays tonight, read that play. He jumped it quick. It felt rushed from the Knights. Mm -hmm. You might want to take a timeout there. I don't know. You can't Monday morning quarterback that situation. But when you uh, have an important first fourth down you have to go for, you want to make sure that you're ready to go and collected. But watch Jared Lee on that. I mean, he was out of a cannon and read that play fantastic. What there was no one play. to get in his way whatsoever. So first down for the Quakers. They're going to hand it off to Hobbs. Not many inside runs for the Quakers tonight. The Knights interior line has been a, a shining star with Michele Tui and Kamani Vaivai. They've done a phenomenal job inside. Make it second down and eight for Wilmington. And so a half that started off with a lot of fireworks comes sort of a back and forth defensive battle here. Dixon in the gun, three receivers to the right side. I'd imagine they try some sort of wide receiver screen to the right side. They have short routes. Dixon's going to take off, and he's going to slide short of the first down. He was trying to target a receiver on the right side, trying to get some quick slants. Yeah, they had three of them. <laughs> yeah. They had triple slants coming on that play. That Pick was your poison. Fun to watch. The Knights cover it well. So now third down and four, a long four to go. with just over three minutes left to play in this third quarter. Double stacks on each side. Dixon back to pass. Puffick wide open across the middle, and Incomplete. we have not seen that. From Ace Taylor has not dropped a ball like that all day. It that was, was a tough catch. It was a very tough catch. It was behind him. He had to go low for it. That's one of those where the receiver coach is looking, I'm like, I understood why you dropped it. I liked it if you didn't, but I couldn't understand why. So now you're at a fourth and four. I mean, you're seeing these windows in the defense. You know you can exploit it. You just got to have a more accurate throw. Get a first down here. So dueling fourth downs from each offense. See if Dixon plays back can be made pass. by the Knights. Nearly oh. intercepted, but a stand for the Southern Virginia defense. So both defenses stand strong on fourth downs. We had a ton of offensive explosion, and then the defense is staying strong. I, I, I don't know how to do anything in this game in terms of prediction other than to say, let's sit back and enjoy what's going on. <laughs> Absolutely agree with that one. I, I just think to myself, like you mentioned, a lot of explosive offensive plays. I'm thinking the defense is sitting there like, you know what? We need to add some highlight reels for our own selves. Let's take control a little bit here. Yeah, they got to get what, so Coach Tiffany, lacrosse coach up at the University of Virginia, two-time national champion, talks about blue plays, these plays that identify, like, what your team does really well, and, and defense wanted some blue plays. Shumway takes himself up the middle for a solid six-yard gain on first and ten. I like seeing that. That's something we haven't seen a whole lot of, an intentional run with Shumway besides the run pass option. Makes it sick, uh, second down and four for the Knights, approaching midfield. That indeed was a read option. Sending a man in motion, making it three receivers on the left side. Wilmington showing blitz. Shum way back to pass. It's picked up. But he's going to run to the right side. Throw it deep and out of bounds. Throwing it away. Wise decision from Shumway. Yeah, great, great call, though. The, the, the delay in the snap allowed the Knights to identify the blitzing, but the blitzing was just too good and flushed him out really quick. And I love the fact that Shumway took a second to notice, hey, blitz over here to make sure that they could actually pick it up. Because if they didn't, that would have been an absolute disaster of play. Who knows? A sack over. Well, the, the hard part about that play is that the pressure came from Shumway's left side. All four eligible receivers were on the left side. Yes. And he had to run to the right. It was, just, it was a really good setup for, for Wilmington. 
Shumway's got the snap. It's a halfback screen, but played super well by Wilmington. It's only going to gain one yard. Johansson was blocking a little extra after the play. Fans of Wilmington aren't happy about how that, how that one turned out. So now, fourth, and two. I kind of agree with the idea of punting it away. You want to pin the defense or Wilmington deep if you can. So the question, though, is can you execute on that play? True. The, the Knights have struggled a bit in, the, in this punting situation where it just, they don't, I mean, look, Shank is not a dedicated punter. He's spending most of practice running offensive sets. Absolutely. Right? He can't be spending most of practice punting the ball. That's a solid kick but right there from the Shank. That's the best of the night. Goes over the head, and he's going to put it inside the 20. <laughs> I, I mean, love it when a player looks up to the booth and gives me the proverbial, oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> so, again, we've been talking about the difficulty of kicking, and he looks up heard us saying I can do it don't you dare doubt me <laughs> and I wasn't you know here's the thing I'm like you don't get a lot of reps I understand absolutely he says I don't need a lot of reps <laughs> <laughs> so with just over a minute left to play in this third quarter again the past several possessions have been a defensive battle now Southern Virginia has Winton pinned it deep in their own territory handing off to Hobbs Right in the teeth of that off de uh, defense, but the offensive line doing grunt work, driving and driving and driving, turns a two-yard gain into a five-yard gain. It's plays like that that let you know, like, sure, the running backs get all the yardage credits, but the offensive line, you know, I mean, even the greatest running backs of all time, like Emmett Smith, if he didn't have the great offensive line of the Cowboys of that era, he wouldn't be known by anybody. Right. And so the same thing goes with offensive line anywhere. So now Adam Dixon in the gun. Two receivers on either side. He's going to throw it to the right side. Wide receiver screen. Pushed out of bounds after he just passes the line to gain. You know, Brian Curse did such a great job. When one guy can block two, you've done a really good job. Oh, yeah. And then Gavin Foshi saw that and said, don't mind if I do. I will get this first down. And it looks like Wilmington will let the clock wind down to the beginning of the fourth quarter. All players are holding up their, their hands with the number four as tradition in college football. And we have a good ball game here, 38 to 27. We've seen all we can see. We've seen turnovers. We've seen big plays. We've seen offensive standouts. We've seen defensive shutouts. We've seen pretty much everything you can expect to see on opening night for college football here at Southern Virginia University. You know, I always laugh at some of the traditions. You know, both teams holding up the four. Like, I wonder whose four is stronger. <laughs> My hand up, I believe in the four, or do you believe more in the four? I don't know. <laughs> but it's always a funny thing, right? It's like both teams are praying to heaven for, for, for the win. You know, who does God love more? I'm not sure he cares. I'm not sure whose four is more powerful. But an 11-point game is – exactly what I think we would want it as a fan watching this game on an opening uh, game of the season. You just want to see good football, and, and I really feel like the Knights have done a great job in turning the, the second quarter into a, a more of a fight, even though they're still down by 11. The, the fans are much more engaged. Heck, Wilmington's going to get a lot more out of this kind of game than they are out of a blowout in terms of the film and going back and preparing for it. The, the conference, the uh, the Ohio Conference. So first down and 10 on their own 28-yard line. They're going to hand it off to Hobbs, and he's going to dive forward for about a good solid four-yard gain. And Wilmington's running game has become more consistent as this half has gone on as well, getting more small chunk yards that they need, like, again, that four-yard gain. Well, I, I do think that the staff offensive staff wants to grind the time a little bit more yes so second down and six to go for the Quakers and off to Hobbs yet again he's got a wide open hole there and by he's finally brought down the best interior field. run for the night or for the the Quakers yeah. by far the best interior run that's the biggest opening we've seen for any running back all night tonight I mean that's 
you couldn't have blocked it any better than that. So first down and 10 for the Fighting Quakers at around midfield. It was the first time in a long time that the Quakers had started inside their 20. May have been their, their worst starting position of the night. And here they are right at the 50. It was a great job by their offense to turn around and get the, the ball, flip the field. Their handoff, another opening on the outside. And finally chased down after a gain of about nine. That was number 26. That being Nehemiah Jenkins, the freshman from Bradenton, Florida. He did a great job pushing that ball outside and using his speed to get out. I'm liking what Wilmington's doing right now. They have two receivers on either side. They always have the option of wide receiver screen on either side. They have talent all over the place. Or they can just simply run it up the middle. Dixon throws a deep, wide open receiver. And it's caught. He's still on his feet. And he's finally forced out of bounds inside the 20. So that play is set up by all those screens. Yes. All those wide receiver screens. It looked like they were going to run another wide receiver screen on that side. And then the receiver just slips it. Stops. Looks like he's going to set up for a... Uh, it's basically what it is. It's a backdoor cut in basketball. Yes. Where you set him up, you try and draw him forward, and then you cut behind him. We have a Knight down on the field on the far side. But that play, of course, was made by number three, Itika Wynn Jr. Itika Wynn Jr., along with, of course, I mean, Ace Taylor. They've been the dynamic duo in the receiving core yeah, so, so far tonight. So dynamic. That's a great word for both of them. So the injured player on the field for Southern Virginia is being attended to by the Knights staff. We saw the replay there just a little bit ago on our end where he attempted the tackle and it just kind of stayed on the field. I think one thing we can both say, well, both offenses for this game have had their moments of ups and downs. That moments where they're making big plays, being consistent, and then drives where they're just falling short. And coming back up, for Southern Virginia, that is number 12. That being Jaw Freeman, or Jaha Freeman, excuse me. Jaha Freeman has been on this team for a couple years now and has been played a pivotal role in this defense. Good to see him walk off the field under his own power. But kind of what I was saying about both offenses is that both offenses have shown a balanced attack for the most part. They've been able to run the ball. They've been able to pass the ball. There's been no one-dimensional offenses tonight. Yeah, no, that's and that's a lot of fun when when you both as a fan uh, coordinator, you know, when when you can run multiple things, it's, it, you, you really have a, a dynamic offense you know, where you can play off different things. First down, ten, muff snap from Dixon. He's going to throw, nearly intercepted, hit him right in the hands. I I, I thought for sure that was going to be an early jump, no flag out, and then. I'm not sure how Robinson didn't catch that. I mean, it was almost as if it was intended for him. Right. He sat down on that thing perfect. A great defensive setup from Robinson. And they were trying that same sort of backdoor play we've been talking about, trying to cut between the D-back. Yeah, this double stacks has been the predominant setup. And Hobbs bounces off the line, drives his way inside the 10. I believe he may have a first down. If not, he is very close to it. Knights are struggling to find Hobbs when, when that first hole closes up. And they're going to shut that down right away. And Southern Virginia barely able to get a defender off the field with substitutions. I'm not sure he was off. I feel like the flag was this is the second time I thought a flag was going to come for sure, and I didn't see the flag. but. I'm up here, the refs are down there, so. So they didn't in fact give him that first down the other play, but they pushed it back three yards. So fourth down and three in night territory. Looks like they'll bring on the kicking unit once again for the Quakers, but they're That's gonna set up fast, they have 16 14, seconds. 14, you got, a, you got a two touchdown lead. I'm, 
I'm thinking that that's a very, very smart play. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, he made the first one that he did from a little further out than a field goal. The kick is up. And that is going to be no good. No good. He shanks the, it left. The issue with that, we were talking about how they had to get on the field. When you have to rush a kicking play like that, that throws the kicker off balance. And so he shanked it to the left side. Great stop from Southern Virginia. Here, you know, here's something I think a lot of people could relate to, right? Imagine that you're going to have to hit a free throw, and all of a sudden there's a countdown, and you don't have the ball in your hands, and all of a sudden you have five seconds left to shoot the free throw. Yes. And, and, and your natural rhythm is a seven-second rhythm. And so you've got to rush that. It's really difficult to, to do something out of rhythm that is very technical. And so Southern Virginia will take over at the 20-yard line down by 11 points. Again, a very doable comeback opportunity here. 11 minutes and 42 seconds. A very tight formation here for Southern Virginia. Yeah, the new formation. We haven't seen that formation yet. Show me rolls to his right. He's going to throw it. And that's going to be a completion and close to a first down. And he tripped on his own feet a little bit or else he would have had a bigger gain. Yeah, I just had to kind of catch and turn, and sometimes that's a little difficult trying to manage the ball while turning around on that. But way to get open from Jalen Troy. I mean, he found the opening that he needed to get to. Shumway roll out to his right. And a well-called play. So second down and one yard to go. We're going to hand it off to Wood. He's going to gain the first down. And maybe two yards extra. So first down and 10 on their own 31. That's a solid start to this possession. Yeah, Wood did the smart th thing there where you just, you know, we heard the Wilmington fans cheering for uh, that idea of just get the first down a while <laughs> back from their running back, right? Just get the first down. That's exactly what he did. Shumway alone in the backfield in this play. This is the first time we've seen this formation. They change it up. Just kidding. <laughs> Trying to hard count. Hand off to Wood. Flying in is a defensive back. We still going to gain maybe half a yard if that. Yeah, great job from uh, Zach Schmidt, the defensive back coming up and blowing up the play. That, that little half draw Half option, it just feels like it's a little slow right now. Yes. Like the, the timing of it just feels a little bit off where Wood doesn't have much of an opportunity to make a decision after he gets the ball in his hands. It just feels Knights. like they need to sharpen that up a little bit. Knights taking their time with substitutions. Now there's 10 seconds left on the play clock. They have to hurry up here. They get the snap off. Shumway looks to his left. There was no one in sight there. There was three defenders. I don't know if Shumway just read that wrong or what, but that makes it third down and nine. Yeah, somebody definitely went the wrong way on that. He was expecting a receiver to be there. There's been some issues communication-wise for the offense so far in the second half for Southern Virginia. They've had a couple situations where they've been close to delay of game. So third down and nine. They got Troy at the tight end. Shumway back to pass. He's got some pressure. Rolls out to his left. He's going to take off with it. He's going to try to get to the first down. He's going to get close. He might Man, be a yard short. That was a lot short. of guts right there to duck your head and go for that first down. It is right at the line. He'll be a yard short, though. They might have to bring out the chains to measure this one. Actually, looks like they're going to have it be a yard short. And with nine and a half minutes left, you're down by 11. I completely understand the call to go for it. Yeah, I think you got to. It's, it's, it's a situation where you've got the kind of players that can make it happen. Starting in shotgun and 
It's just tough to make it happen. Wood's going to drive his feet forward, and it's going to be close. Depends on which judge, the, which line judge. It's going to be very close. They've got to get it to the hash mark. Looks like they're going to take some time to measure it. I think he just might be short. Yeah. You know, when you've got to do these short yardage plays and you're doing it out of the shotgun, it's difficult because the, the running back is getting the ball without forward momentum. He's kind yes. of stopped when he gets the ball, and then he's got to start running. And, and he just short of the line to gain a fantastic stop from Le Wilmington College. Yeah, that now, was huge. My thing with that four, those four down plays, we've seen them stop short on those a couple of occasions, Southern Virginia, I mean. And one thing that I would say is if you're going to do that, they've been stopped because they've been predictable. Give it to Wood, right? On those, I'd say pull it with Shumway, go to the outside, and try it that way because, again, he can move, and they're fully expecting Wood to take the carry. Just something creative. Absolutely, you can do that. Also, as a coach, you're like, I just need a yard, and Wood, can you get a yard? You've gotten a yard five times for us. Right. Do it one more time. It's... Hobbs got a lane. Boy, he's strong. Tough to bring down. Brought down after a gain of six. And you're, and you're right, Dawson. Uh, you know, as we sit here and look at that, you're like, okay, this is kind of something you ran three or four times. And, you know, is there another option to that? I would love that they could do it off of, you know, do an off-tackle run from that, or they could do it from under center. They could do something that would give Wood a little bit of, of room to make a play. But also, it was third and one earlier in that drive and right. he got it really well yeah so now second down and a long three to go for Wilmington they're gonna hand it off to Hobbs yet again and he is stopped right after crossing the line of scrimmage yeah that you know there's a big hit when Hobbs gets turned sideways because he's a load <laughs> it'll be basically a no gain for Wilmington. A big, important set of downs here for Southern Virginia, because time is running out. Dixon back to pass, pump fakes, throws oh, deep they, left, wide open they, as the receiver. They got him again with the exact same play. Looked like a wide receiver screen. They go, go up over the top. Beautiful catch from Lathan Jones. Lathan Jones was absolutely all alone on that play. No one within 15 yards of him against that stack. He sneaks by the quarterback. Other defensive back comes up. He is all by himself in the end zone. Easy play. So one of the things about football is that you're constantly trying to do things to manipulate the defense for the next play. Yes. And here you see Wilmington doing a fantastic job of utilizing previous tendencies against the defensive backs who got caught anticipating instead of reading and reacting. Yes, absolutely agree with you there as that PAT is up and through. Makes it 45 to 27 in favor of the Fighting Quakers. And so now, you're down by 18. You got just under eight minutes left to play. You're still trying to make those plays. Again, they scored two touchdowns in a, in a span of minutes to begin the second half. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that they can score quickly. It's whether or not you can call the plays to put yourself in good situations to do so. It's you take advantage of momentum changing moments. And again, with the slow burn it's been in this four, or fourth quarter, it's been kind of hard to find those. Well, if the Knights can come back and get something right now, you know, win or lose, Coach Mutala is going to be able to go into the the week with some opportunities to talk about the success that the team had. Yes. And, and to build on uh, a couple things that were done really well and obviously try to fix some things. But you want, you want to feel like the whole time you were right there, for a second time, you've been knocked down twice. Can, can, you, can you recover from this and do it again? A solid kick there. 
fielded at the 12. Brings it all the way out to the 35 and still on his feet. All the way out to the 41 yard line. I felt like the blocking group for the Knights basically just grabbed Washington, picked him up and carried him about 15 yards. I mean, like, talk about yards after first contact. I mean, I think he had 20 on that play. In fact, it's not just yards after contact, it's yards with constant contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, is there a stat, yards with three people holding on to you? What's, what's that stat? <laughs> that needs to be made right here and now as the Knights have three receivers on the left side. Shumway drops back to pass. Look to his right. He's going to throw deep. Nearly caught by number two, Chase Wester. Went up for it, but it was well defended from You know, this goes back to your point earlier, Dawson, that throwing into the, the field side, the, the boundary side, you know, throwing into this tight side, into the boundary where it's closer, doesn't give Wester a lot of chance to just get out underneath the ball if it's thrown over his outside shoulder. And that's what happened there. Absolutely. And so second down and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Shumway is going to roll out to his right side. Yeah, they're going to say that Davis got there just a little early. And getting there early is number zero. That is Quentin Davis, the junior from Trotwood, Ohio. And he did get there just a half second too early for that one. And so they're discussing it here. It it's, it's, was really close. And I would say generally. In fact, it was not on Wilmington. It's an eligible receiver oh, downfield. Yeah, so Davis was right. He wasn't early. And so I was going to say, that was so tight that usually they don't make that call. It's one of those bang-bang yeah. plays where you definitely wouldn't call that. But it looks like they had a lineup issue, lack of communication. As so that puts him back to second and 15. And probably a good thing that that call wasn't against Wilmington because we had a lot of Wilmington fans who were, you know, in a way justifiably very frustrated at the potential of that being a pass interference call. Shumway back to pass, looks to his left side. Very gutsy throw. That was completed. Chase Pope, it's the first time we've seen Chase Pope on, on a catch. He, he had a lot of really nice plays last season. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to see Shumway help him get uh, in the rhythm. New quarterback, you know, uh, can we see receivers get in the rhythm? It's been, it's been basically the Shank and Wester show. It's nice to see Pope get the ball. I mean, there was a defender right next to Chase Pope. I mean, I think he stole the ball him. from him. I think he jumped in front of the receiver. <laughs> To see, it felt like it was a uh, what, what normally what the the defensive back does to a receiver, jumping in front, stealing the ball. So it makes it a manageable third down and five. Shumway back to pass, running out to his right, evading the defenders. Some great footwork, throws to Wester for a first down for Southern Virginia. Shumway being the magician in the pocket. Really nice finish to that ball where he had to throw it up over the defender to get it into Wester's hands, and Wester doing a great job focusing in on the ball. Great by the defensive or offensive line of the Knights to not give up on the play. That Absolutely. Was, that was fun to watch. I mean, half the reason that Shumway was able to run back to the left side is because offensive linemen were fighting off defenders that are coming up behind him. Makes a first down and 10 at Wilmington's 44-yard line. Shumway back to pass. Intercepted by Wilmington. He's got all the space in the world. One man to beat. Shumway shoves him out of bounds. Great job sitting on that pass. There's a penalty flag on the field. That ball thrown just a little bit inside. Mm -hmm. And the defensive back was right there to take advantage. Well, the key is that he kept everything in front of him, and so he could react to what was coming, run up to it, make a play on the ball. Yeah. 
also I would say when you look at that uh, when you look at the the replay, when that man comes out of the break, you have got to get the ball to him now because if you don't, it's going to get jumped. Oh yes. You can't sit on that. He can't be coming around and stopping before he catches it, or, or you're late on that on those out routes. Yes. In, in, against a zone, if you're against a zone and you throw that ball late to the out route, I mean that's what's going to happen. And so there was unsportsmanlike conduct on Wilmington College. Maybe some extra things were said, or no? It was the bench coming out to, of the box right. to celebrate. So getting a little too excited as Wilmington takes over at Southern Virginia's 33-yard line. Hobbs chugging along for five yards on that carry. Just under six minutes left to play in this fourth quarter. It's been an exciting ball game, but with that interception. And with a potential score on this drive, Wilmington looks to put it away here. Yeah, it's a, a, a tough spot right now for the Knights where the comeback is like all-time epic comeback. If they make it, again, you're just looking to make plays. You're looking to find reasons and things to celebrate, give the fans something to celebrate. Dixon throws out to his right and stopped at for a no gain. Yeah, the Four Knights are really going to have to figure out how to manage these wide receiver screens. Right. One player that we have to give a lot of credit to is Shumway. He could have easily let him return it for a touchdown, but he chased him down, pushed him out of bounds, and did not let give up on that play. Yeah, you love to see that. Again, that's the that's the the blue play, right? That's the play yeah. that in the film, you start the first five minutes of film with those plays. Even though it's an interception, what did he do with the play, right? right. I mean, that's, that says a lot about Shumway. That's a great, a, a very uh, wise observation. I, I love that we could celebrate Shumway on that. Third and five, cross the middle completion for first down. Another flag on the field. We're seeing a lot of penalty flags in the second half. It's getting a little bit sloppy here in the stretch. Yeah, from the near side, line judge. Might be uh, somebody covered up, illegal. Illegal formation. And that was Ace Taylor once again making another play for the Quakers. Oh, no, it's going to be a defensive a holding or pass interference. We have still yet to hear the call from the refs. But I think you may be right, Scotty. That is number 37. That is Bobby Balboa. Make it first down and 10 at the 19 yard line. And I tell you what, Wilmington's more than happy to just run down this clock as much as they possibly can. They don't need another score. They just need to wind it down to maybe around two minutes, minute and a half. Throw out to the left side. I have never seen so many single set plays except out of a wishbone offense yeah. where they're running this double wing stack set over and over and over again out of the shotgun like it's the exact same thing and they're getting a lot out of it it's, and you, it's you can do incredible. a lot of things with this formation too and that's one thing that's great is if you can run a simplified offensive scheme and everybody gets on board and everybody can get you know the know their role that makes a very efficient offense Dixon looks to his right, throws the inside, incomplete. incomplete. Just it a little there. high. It was there. Yeah, Wynn Jr. was right there. He had the inside play, and he's looking over. I mean, it wasn't a bad pass. He looked over to Dixon, and he said, that one's on me. And so that makes it third down and seven. With the incompletion, it stops the clock at three minutes and 35 seconds. Wilmington having difficulty getting the call in from the sideline. Under 10 seconds left on the play clock. Gonna hand it off to Hobbs, he's got some space. Breaks wow. a tackle or two, gets inside the 10 and inside the five it looks like. That was a heck of a, of a run, breaking that tackle on the outside. 
mean, Wilmington, they've they've been a complete offensive team. They've been able to run the ball when needed. They've been able to make big plays. Again, that one set they've been able to run so much out of. Yeah, it's so interesting. You know, they're running. They are running against the Knights with a, a five-man front and no tight end, no lead blockers. There's nothing when they run out of that uh, double stack. First and goal inside the five. Handing it off to Hobbs, and he is stuffed at the line. Maybe going to gain one yard. And that's been a change where the Knights were dominating the interior, and now you've seen the, the patience of the offensive play calling to say we're going to keep at They clearly saw something, feel like they could make it work, and they've kept running it and kept running it, and it's worked. Some of that has to do with the score. You know, you can keep running that kind of thing if you feel like you're just trying to grind the clock but they clearly have seen that and felt like they could do something with that interior uh, uh, run. Dixon's looking to his right side. He's got a man. It is caught for a touchdown. This time, Wynn Jr. getting across the front of the defender. and He doesn't drop that one. Again, it's been those inside slant routes from Wilmington all night long. They've been open, and if it's not that, it's in between the cornerback and the safety on that, on that far side. It's been... A beautifully executed offense so far today, and that extends the lead possibly to 52 to 27, pending the PAT. The kick is up, and it is good. Make it 52 to 27, and it's a lot of things are playing out like they did in the first half. Both teams were playing very well offensively, getting points on the board. And then Wilmington started to take over to end the half. Second half started. Southern Virginia had a lot of swing plays, those pop plays like you were saying, or splash plays. And then Wilmington started to take over again, kind of get their feet back underneath them. It's been a tale of two halves that have been very, very similar. Yeah, the Knights are going to have to figure out how to be consistent in their play. And again, I credit the, the offensive staff of Wilmington to look and diagnose things and say, okay, this is what's going to be here next. It's been really instructive to watch them identify what's next based on how the Knights are playing. And I've just loved the play of Adam Dixon, quarterback for Wilmington, and their, their wide receivers as well. I mean, I mentioned early on in the game how last year they had three receivers that were their top receivers that graduated, right? And they've been able to recover from that very well and been able to bring in some guys that are stepping up, making big plays. It's been really great to see. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, uh, it, it's a fun team to watch play. But I, I, I've, I've, I've loved how the Knights have had moments, right? Like there's a lot to cheer for if you're wearing crimson and white this evening. There's a lot of hope that uh, this team has the tools to make it work. And Wisely just going to fall on it, make sure there's no other kind of bad play that can happen, no turnover can take place. So just over two minutes left to play in this game, the Knights will take possession on their own 35-yard line. And folks, if you're joining us late, don't let the score fool you. This has been a tightly contested game all night long. It's been back and forth. Great effort put forth by both sides. Great coaching adjustments, momentum shifts, everything you could possibly want from opening night from college football in Division Three. We've got trips right here for Southern Virginia. That pass is, is complete to the inside. Complete for about seven yards make it second down and three. And as we wind down today's game, we want to remind you, those watching at home, be sure to like and subscribe to the Knights Broadcasting Channel, and be sure to hit that notification bell, that way you don't miss out on all the future sporting events here at Southern Virginia University. Shumway toss it to Wester, and he's going to be out of bounds. Caught it with his hands, but not able to stay in bounds. Wester has not gotten up yet, it looks like. I believe he may have slid into the bench of Southern Virginia.
Wester is back on his feet, and so time he's run out of space on the on the on the boundary side of the play. Shumway throws in the inside, complete for the first down. We haven't seen that slant since the first quarter. Good catch. Fantastic catch. Again, a little to the inside. Jarek Washington doing a great job. Orange County High School product. Shumway had to handle the bad snap. Complete for about seven yards. That was Francois on the reception. Woodson Francois came on very strong late in the year last year. There, there's a number of weapons out here for Shumway to use that have proven that they are really good players between Pope and Francois and Johansson, obviously Western Shank. They've got the weapons, just got to find the consistency, the timing. You got to figure out what rotation works best for these different talents and their ability. Shumway tossing it deep. That's Johannes. Incomplete. Oh, Johansson, excuse me. Johansson had a great opportunity to get that ball, but it was well defended. He had two defenders draped all over him. Yeah, he, she was, he looked like he was trying to, he almost had to just one hand that since his left hand was kind of jammed down underneath him by the defensive back. So third down and three for Southern Virginia. Wester back on the field, it's good to see. Shall we looking left? Nice ball to the outside, completed for the first down. Howard on the reception on that one. And got some extra yards after the catch. Good play for the Knights, trying to keep the, the clock moving. A lot of subs are in for Wilmington. When you look across the, the defense, they've got uh, mostly subs in right now, which is great when you're first game and, and as a coach you can get uh, multiple reps to get it on film because that's really important for these second team players. I mean these young players maybe some of them have never seen action in a college football game before so maybe getting that rust off them um, get the butterflies out of their stomach. That's completed to the outside to Wester. That was complete for a gain of about five yards. So a minute and 12 seconds left in this contest. I like the fact that Southern Virginia is attacking, right? And they're attacking place that arguably they maybe should have been attacking all game long. But again, it's all about learning and figuring out what you can take into the next week's game. Yeah, you got to know that, you know, these games are going to be tough. You got to come in. You got to be ready up over the top. Way too far to the inside on that pass from Shumway. His receiver was running to the outside toward the sideline, but he threw it as if he was going to curl into the end zone. And so that's going to fall incomplete. So SVU looks like they're just going to continue tracking forward. Third down and five. Knights would really like to get ball into the end zone here to get above 30 and feel like they have some positive momentum in the fourth quarter. Shumway back to pass. He's got pressure, and it's stripped and fallen on by Knights offensive lineman. Fourth and long. Looks like that was number 70, Bryce Lampert. And will make it fourth down and about 19. There were two Quakers that went up for a nice uh, high chest bump, and they were both pretty tough to the other teammate, knocked them each other down. That was, <laughs> that was real celebration right there. Long fourth down play. Shum way back to pass. Got pressure instantly, rolling out to his right. He's going to chuck it deep. 
and it's going to fall harmlessly to the turf with 11 seconds left to play in this ball game. And you got to imagine that Wilmington is going to simply just kneel it, take the victory. It was well earned on Wilmington's part and a well-fought contest from Southern Virginia as well. We've talked about the different things they've been able to do, the momentum shifts they had, the splash plays they made. Regardless of the separation of score, this is a fantastic contest and a fantastic way to begin the season. Yeah, here at Knight Stadium, Knight, Knight Fields, the fields up here, you know, before the, the sun went down, I look across the hilltop across the way. Just fantastic day, the Knights uh, men's soccer team uh, getting a 0-0 uh, a zero -zero draw against a very good team earlier today. That was fantastic. The Knights women's soccer team getting a, a win against an ODAC team up in Bridgewater. It's been a fantastic day to be a, a, a Knight, but also we got to thank Wilmington for coming down. They traveled really well. Coming from Ohio, fantastic fans here. A lot of them here on the, on the, the left side of the stadium. I just fantastic day for football, Dawson. Absolutely. We want to thank all of our producers as well, Craig and Ruben and everyone down in the broadcast booth working the cameras, putting in the hard hours, make sure that these broadcasts can be as quality as they possibly can for you guys. And there's constant improvements happening, constant work being done to make sure that these broadcasts are as high quality as they could possibly be for you. And I think as far as with Southern Virginia, one thing I want to ask you, Scotty, before we decide to sign off here tonight, if you're Coach Edwin Mulitalo, you see this game, you see your players fight through adversity and see different things happen, what is something that you, if you were to coach this team, what's something you would focus on this next week in practice, judging from this? Well, you've got a young team, and so you've got to build them up. And that's Coach Muitalo anyway. That's his heart. So right. he's going to take these guys, he's going to build them up, and, you know, they're going to have to focus on how they manage through the changes the other team is playing. I think there's, they've got all the weapons they need on the offensive side. Can they fix the run game a little bit? The, they've got a little bit more in it. The outside stuff was really effective in the first half. I feel like they have all the tools they need. They clearly need to get the defensive backs on the same page. Mm -hmm. and, and once that happens, I think they'll be okay. Um, this was something they probably weren't really prepared for, or maybe they hadn't seen it, that double stack. You know, so there, those things happen. Um, they get the defensive backs on the same page, everybody working together. They're going to be okay. They clearly have good players. The, the D-line's they're going to have to figure out how they manage through the, the linebacker rotation, having lost some, you know, a lot, lot there, a lot. Lepa Apodaca and C.O.C. And so that's going to take some time. He's got to be happy with what he saw overall. Absolutely. A lot of work to be done, but a lot of things to be optimistic about. And once again, we want to thank you all so much for joining us on the night's broadcast YouTube channel. Be sure to leave us a like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you're notified of all the sporting events coming up. God bless and go Knights.